So for today's video, I'd just like to post a discussion that I had last night on the Sitch and Adam show. It ended up being kind of a four on one sort of discussion uh, where it was me on one side and then the other side, it was uh, Adam and Sitch and uh, actual Justice Warrior and Mauler. Um, so I feel like all things considered, I did pretty well for it being a four on one environment. There was definitely a few things looking back where I'm like, mm, I probably shouldn't have gone down that tangent. I probably shouldn't have made that argument. Um, but I try not to be too past oriented or past minded. The main thing that I regret is that at one point I do uh, get into anecdotal sort of evidence um, because I was asked about why I believe a certain thing and I gave an anecdote and I feel like I probably should have just refrained from that because, you know, your personal experience is very convincing to you, but it's never very convincing to someone else because anybody can can pull up an anecdote. They're very hard to verify and they're very easy to fabricate. So um, I'm gonna try to avoid any sort of anecdotal stuff in the future, especially when I'm t trying to convince people of something. But other than that, I feel like I did pretty reasonably well, but you guys can let me know what your critiques of my performance would be. Uh, down below. I don't want to become one of these debate bro kind of people. And really, I tried to prevent it from being too much of a debate and more of a discussion. Uh, but of course, it, it's, it was a contentious discussion. And uh, I don't know. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope Adam and Sitch don't mind me posting it. I figure since I was a participant, I'm free to use it as I wish. If they don't want me to, then uh, <laughs> I don't know. Sue me, I guess. But uh, here it is. Check it out. Zoom is the Fucking best. Spaghetti, man. Hey What's now. Up? What's up? Spaghetti. Fucking spaghetti, bitch. Yeah. I don't yeah, I don't uh, know what that mean. I, I don't disagree. <laughs> oh I think, no, it's not I think a he's meme. making spaghetti. Oh, you're eating oh, spaghetti. Oh, okay, yeah, nice. right now, right at this very second. Well, thanks for joining the stream even though you're in the middle of your meal. Are you going to yeah. I mean, I can bring your camera up if you want. Uh yeah, I was going to try to go on here. I know I see you're trying to do like the OBS thing. Fucking bullshit. There we go. I have my camera here. Yeah. These guys are all a bunch of eye over here. these guys are a bunch of unseen uh, anons. Wow, that's that's not, what are you talking about? Not Sean. Right. I, I normally come so on. It's start just virtual. Bunch of, I oh my god! Okay, there we go. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, the yeah. face paint on. Is this how you normally eat dinner, TJ? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I gotta sit down for a nice spaghetti I gotta, dinner, full face paint and shit. You know, I gotta so bring it to blend I into the background. I gotta bring this up. Oh, it's by so the predator, bad, but I don't. So, so what's like so? What started your shift, TJ, to being first of a all, based anti-SJW to a woke feminist? Oh no! Well, I had some other things I wanted to say first. Oh, okay, you can say other things. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Well, the first thing is, uh, it was not a hot wax video. I don't know why people keep saying that. It was hot mm -hmm. oil. Oh, okay. It was oil. Yeah. That's why I wanted the I mean, HD I, copy, honestly. Yeah, that's the, that was the main reason I wanted to come on and just be like, hey, you know, like, Listen, don't, it wasn't don't besmirch me as some fucking wax peasant, all right? right. I actually think wax is fine, too. I'm fine with people it doing It was that. high quality oil. Right. TJ, well, is that who, who, wait, that, who are you sending oil? this video to? TJ? I want to. Know, is that some kind of app, or do you really have? Because I play with the apps too. I've, I don't know if like I can't no, tell I'm, if that's I'm an I'm app or not. It's is, called it's called <laughs> face paint. But so it's, like you're just sitting down to dinner. You're like I I would like uh, some spaghetti and oh here let me get ready for dinner. Yeah, you know why not? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. I don't I see like why it. Not. I should do that. So more yeah, often. I was watching the, the fucking stream for a while, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I'm getting <laughs> bored being on the sidelines. Just want to jump in and see what the fuck's going on. Cool. All cool. Right, fight. What do you mean? Who'd you send that video to, and why? <laughs> why are we on that topic? I don't no, know. You brought a number. Uh, who I sent it to? It was a. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like he said a dominatrix. I mean, uh, as far as I could tell, uh, was it actual Justice Warrior that said that? His, yeah. his yeah. version of events is uh, accurate. Okay. Uh, as for why I sent out multiple ones, well, for one, I didn't because both of them were kind of sent around. Like that video was already sent by the time right. the one came out. Right. But also, I don't really care. I have sent other people videos since then. I really don't give a shit if they leak or not. If you want to go watch mm -hmm. me uh, stuff things up my ass well, or whatever. T TJ, TJ, that should be a Patreon tier, shouldn't it? Do you have the links? 
TJ, in our defense, we didn't bring up the banana. Our chat did. So, like, we would <laughs> never. Actually, actually, TJ brought it up. In the I was going to say. Yeah. Well, yeah. I brought it up because I saw it in your chat, but whatever. It's, it's oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we would not. We chat. would not. Yeah, we would not. I mean, yeah, we're. You guys are I feel like brown. we would. <laughs> no, this is a highbrow show. This is high class. Yeah, of course. This we is a try, highbrow comedy I mean, show. Yeah. Serious I mean, we show. do some lowbrow stuff, too. I mean, it's no. not all highbrow. Adam, no. I refuse to believe that. Don't say right. that. What are you talking about? I the half that stream I had some dumb anime head on. That is no. true. You had no. the autism head on. Well, that's where your brain goes for like <laughs> low brows. <laughs> anime. <laughs> anime hat. Yeah, that's the lowest of low brows. Yeah. To do you want to talk about fascism? Why well, I, I well what about the I'm I more actually kind of agree with the uh, with actual justice warrior Sean on that, mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. this kind of like, I don't know, I guess at a certain point I get so bored of the semantics uh, arguments where it's just like, let's quibble over a definition for, you know, well, that's what I said. <laughs> oh, okay. Well then you said, I'm, I'm, <laughs> said I have been on that train. Since you guys I sound very similar. Thing. Sorry about that. I'll try it's to sound right. different. I'll talk in with my cringy accent. No, I meant Mahler and uh, Sean sound very okay. similar. He does sound just like I, I just wanted the free credit, honestly. Racism against the Welsh. No, so, okay, well, wait a minute. So, has your, do you feel like your position has changed from 2016 at all? Or or no? I mean, it'd be pretty fucking pathetic if my position hadn't changed since 2016, mm -hmm. I feel like. Surely not okay. on everything. But, it, I mean, it could change for the better or for the worse, though, right? Right. Well, that's subjective as I fuck, mean, you. Right? Well, I know, but you could be like Last a full Nazi. <laughs> I would argue that right. if you that if you, well, your I mean, I, you, I said I was a molecule to the left of Hitler. So I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's still pretty far if you zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> it's all relative. Yeah. So what? But so ha so you think you have changed? Do you become more leftist? Do you become more woke? What's going on here? I don't really. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys about that woke word. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, well, woke is generally, I characterize it as people who have woken up to the fact that liberalism will not solve society's problems and want to okay. move to a more leftist uh, way of dealing with these issues. All right. Okay. I don't really feel like that's how it's usually usually used. I feel like it's just kind of like used as a weird, weird way to dismiss like creative decisions in television shows that people don't like. Dude, it's this like, is well, man. You're, you're oh, no. Woke. Woke. You're just having is... the nightmare of my existence, darting between streams. They literally, the words will change definition on who I'm talking to at the time. It's like, so I don't so, like using words anymore. <laughs> yeah, words Gen are bullshit. From now on, we just communicate in clicks. People use woke to yeah. mean political, politically correct a lot, if that's what you're okay. referring to. Like, oh, this this TV show feels too politically correct. But sure. I'm saying that the ideology of politically political correctness comes from But then you have a show a like illiberal... The Boys that's like very not politically correct, but I've still heard people describe as woke because it leans kind of mm -hmm. left in its messaging. I've like, only seen this first time. I can't really like, comment on that. But... You know, there's fucking, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in there that doesn't really seem very politically correct, but. Sure. You're well, people like... can use the term incorrectly. Uh, Wait, I don't, I don't want to tangent off. You go ahead, actually. <laughs> I mean, people are calling Witcher woke, which, I mean, Witcher seems pretty incredibly anti-woke at least the first yeah, season I mean, like, is all about a woman sacrificing her the more baby you, for her job if you try to it. if you try to watch it you will fall asleep so it's well that definitely is definitely anti-woke but i just i feel like i'm not getting a, an answer though like an answer to what well has your have your position changed at all on yeah on these has, issues? of course i mean obviously yeah like but like what how how did this happen how did the change occur um probably probably mostly donald trump okay so i was right a lot yeah. of this is a reaction to Trump. Yeah, to be fair, that's what you said. Yeah. Fine, you I mean, win. I think it you kind of, money, uh, you know, like at a certain point, there's like a, a, a certain pressures build up and you have like your do or die moments. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, it, if, if it's like you're marching with a group of people and then this issue comes up, I mean, it's the same thing that happened with the, the whole like atheism plus thing that was referenced earlier in the stream. It's oh, like, man, I remember you're that. You're marching down the, the, it's like, hey, we're, we're doing this. This group's going here, and this group's going here. Who you, who you fucking, who you with? It's like, oh shit. I guess I'm going that way. <laughs> are you still? Right. Um, I know it sounds like a weird question, but are you still fully like atheist? Would you say? Oh yeah. Of course. Yeah. I haven't. I mean, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any reason to start believing in God yet. I mean, I don't know. No, I know. It's just a lot of different YouTubers end up uh, having different thoughts about different things, and I was just because I, I haven't no, I seen know. your stuff I mean, in a while. That's all. 
Usually it's people that turn to be more right wing find God, not people that turn to be more left wing. I mean, you know, yeah, you know what? Um, I found a, a different sort of context uh, through which to view religion. I, I don't know. I guess I mm-hmm. have a greater admiration for philosopher uh, uh, than I did when I was uh, in my <laughs> atheist heydays. But um, a, what'd you say? Not, I don't. I don't. I don't a greater say. admiration for what? For Lucifer. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Lucifer too, but uh, I said Christ. But oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I you. So are you? I thought you said Lucifer as well. <laughs> yeah. Are you? So I'm glad we clarified. Are you? So have you? I classify like an anti-theist as someone who believes the world would be a better place without religion. Like they see religion. Uh, yeah, like, I would say I'm an anti-theist. Okay, so you are still an anti-theist, right? Yes. Yeah. So I why do you? <laughs> so you have respect for Christ as like a character from a movie, or yeah, you... or you know, I mean, if he was a real person, then I guess I respect some of the things he said. Right. I respect mm-hmm. the paradigm shift that he represented. Yeah, he's a revolutionary. A that without religion, the world would be better off. What's that? Or do you think it's a guarantee that we'll be better without religion, or do you think there's just a strong? No, chance? I don't think it's a guarantee. I don't think anything's guaranteed. Because yeah, that's that's the part where it would probably the doubt for me would probably stop me from saying anti theist. I used to. I'm when not I, sure. I, I would say that I'm, I'm less uh, dogmatic in that thinking than I used to be because there used there was a time when I definitely thought like. Um, that uh, if you just got rid of religion, all the world's problems would, would uh, dissolve away. And I, I certainly don't think that way anymore. Hmm. If you could kill off two religions, like just write them out of the script, like which ones would they be? Christianity and Islam. Wow. Yeah, wow. chosen people. Still the around. Jews inherit the earth. There you go. I guess so. They got to share it with the Jainists or whoever else is left. Rastafarians. Oh, I don't know. All right, what's, your, what's your third one since you gave that answer too fast? No. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Wait, Wait what was it? <laughs> Jews. That's terrible. Who oh, went full Nazi? Oh, went full do you see no? Molecule left of Hitler. <laughs> do you see no? Man, I can't believe you didn't pick one of the ones with like an eight-armed like elephant man or something like that. Those ones are cool. Dude. Scientology <laughs> was on the table. You let it go. But yeah, Scientology is hilarious. I, was, I mean, I wanted a clean sweep of the Abrahamic religions. Yeah. Mm. Do you see no value well, then again, in religion? I, I guess. Uh, I guess Mormonism is still around at this point. So well, fun. that's part of Christianity, isn't it? Mm, mm. They got their own book. I don't know about that. Okay. I guess the Mormons are all we have left, unfortunately. But mm. Yeah, maybe I should have said Mormons and not Jews. Yeah. But oh well. You can take it back. No, you hey. can't. They're gone, actually. Okay. As long as I can still have the bagels and locks and stuff, it's, it's fine. Nice. How do you feel about like the eras of the internet? Do you look back on the skeptic days, era, whatever, and think like, man, if only I had done X... Or do you just feel like whatever that was a time and now this is? I don't the really time. spend too much time worrying about the past because it's like unchangeable. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know, learn a thing or two maybe, but uh, that's about it. Why did you guys all break up? What happened? <laughs> like, well, I, I, who cares about that? I want to know why you watch so little hey. of our video. That's what I care about. Come hey, we're getting to know him a bit better before you start. Yeah, you know, like, don't, I mean, like Jesus Christ, buy I me dinner know. first for Listen. fuck's sake. Yeah. Okay, go Adam, ahead. you got to kiss their neck before you reach. Go the ahead end with your man. like. Smaller... I need to be fucking wined and dined. A yes. Little bit. Go ahead look, with your dumb look, questions. TJ put on his best wow. makeup for. for you. I, I have even, a feeling yeah, he just had that on. This, makeup this whole time, you know. No, I was He's doing old. a video earlier. I was wearing for. A I figured, video. yeah. But um. Yeah, I don't know. Um. Uh, so uh, why didn't I watch more? I don't know because I I got fucking bored. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. They told you. You guys. I was doing it for like ten minutes. I mean, well, I watched ten minutes of it. It really pissed me off when you guys fucking said it was straw manning because that doesn't even that literally doesn't make fucking sense. How well, no, can you okay, so let's a hypothetical finally, fucking person. Finally, let's get some substance going here. Okay. All right, yeah. Do you understand there's the two sides of the abortion debate are both sure. interested in bodily autonomy. They're just focusing on the body bodily autonomy of the fetus or the I don't know. What what do you call an unborn baby? I guess it is a fetus. Yeah, fetus. Or yeah. you can call it an unborn baby. So when does when to. does I mean I, I don't agree like the the Christian conservatives will say life begins at conception. I don't like that doesn't make any sense to me. Like right at conception, come on. But at some point you got to say, listen, there's some bodily autonomy going here for the fetus. Yeah. So Sure, yeah. Okay. So, but you you agree then though, so that you don't. No, nah, I mean I don't know. I, I guess that there. I mean there. There's always going to be argument about like when. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um. Yeah, so, I mean, but do I you know, have I, a I position there? 
as for like when life uh, begins. Yeah. Well, we we or when when we, rights be, should be extended or or whatever. Yeah. Well, sure. Are, I mean, are you in favor of abortion up till conception or or what? Up till conception? Um, what up till conception. <laughs> that, that's imp- that's not really yeah, possible. Yeah, so that's so. Right. That it, up up yeah. until no, no. birth. <laughs> okay. Until birth. I'm scared of your world, Sitch. Uh The scary place. Up until birth. Yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe. Uh, t- t- I would say tentatively yes, but uh, really. Okay. I would, I'd really? Comfortable. I'd be more comfortable with with viability, I guess. But uh, okay. Well, I mean, it's a pretty. It's a pretty big gap, though. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, you know, if I had to choose, like if it was like all you or nothing, I would definitely, I'd take up till birth before I took uh, like a middle ground. But I would say via, fetal viability is probably really? the, the benchmark that makes the most sense to me. Okay. I, uh, I could totally when, see when why it's viability. For uh, first two, you can have abortion in the first two trimesters according to the viability. Yeah, no, no, that's I mean, according to Roe. There's definitely like, been, um, there's definitely been some people who have been born uh within that time period and, and you know uh, lived on actually uh my uh one of my sisters was uh at the time the most premature baby ever born to survive right wow uh, I, I, she was born in uh, 19 uh, must have been the late 70s early 80s actually so yeah, the, how many yeah, was? when we she was written up in a, a number of medical journals i think she was about i think she was born after uh four months or, or something like that wow so, Wait. so when we accused you of straw manning, we were accusing you of straw manning because you were saying that conservatives only wanted to control women's bodies. Right. When that's not really the case, their their they under their their belief system is. But you that, have to. But wait, but like, well, my but my point is that you can't speak for all conservatives. My my point is like you know if I make a criticism that's very mm-hmm. general in nature, you can't call it a straw man. Unless I specifically picked a target and the argument does not apply to what they've actually said. Well, the argument literally is a straw man, though. But wait, I mean, doesn't the, so the right all the time says the left just wants to kill babies. They enjoy killing babies. Right. I mean, how is, is that not a straw man? I mean, it's not a complete straw man because there could be people on the left who do just enjoy killing babies. I don't know. Yeah, but but yeah, like but if, if, they you say, care- if they say the left in general, mm-hmm. like everyone on the left is like that, then I guess I could be a straw man. But I don't but feel that like implied- I said everyone on the right just say- wants to take away bodily autonomy. I said about I said that people wanted. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I did say that, but mm-hmm. um, well, str- straw man is wait. a is an argument that's easy to defeat, and obviously. Well, a straw man is yeah. It's when you give your when you put a position in your opponent's mouth that's not yeah. It's easy to what defeat. they actually believe. Like you're, but yeah. Are, I, I, but I genuinely believe that there's tons of conservatives out there who do not give a shit about fetuses or fetal viability or any of these things and just want an excuse to control women. To be fair, like, do any of these conservatives openly claim that's what they want? They just want I mean, to control. I mean, I've never heard anyone make that claim. Because even then, even by your definition, you'd still be straw manning them. Even if that's what they truly wanted, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, I feel like a straw man would necessarily be an, a position they don't hold, not just a position they're covert about. Otherwise, the standard. I mean, if we're gonna well, go to that, said if, if we're gonna go, but we're gonna, if we're gonna go down that road, then like literally anybody who states their opinion cannot be. You can't argue that that's not their genuine motivation. Like yeah, who, you could, you know, who like, cares about motivations that much? I, I got a question about viability though, because that's like your standard. Oh, never mind on that. Then. No, come on. <laughs> okay. It's the uh, straw man is way more interesting. No, no, who a cares, straw man is where you take. Who cares about the viability? Okay, Look, okay. We're a straw man is where you take a weaker portion oh, of somebody's argument and you construct it and take that down rather than Dude, their Sean, own argument. Are you pro life right. or pro that's choice? Uh, I'm pro- not only pro choice. I'm pro choice to send the children to the mines. They we okay. need to bring back child right. labor. I like that. Uh, so I guess everyone here is pro-choice. So, but I, I mean, yeah, I we what argue point with... is way more interesting. Well, I, I, than... I'm assuming everyone's drawing the line at different points, and that's like the big debate. Which is why right. I, I do err on the side of, if you're going to talk about this topic, you probably should reference the fact that the why why not reference the best arguments from both sides instead of just saying you fuckers, you just want to kill babies. Right. It's like all right, you know. baby killers <laughs> versus women's body controllers is just I mean it's two straw men. Well, but like to get to the point though, like if it, okay, so like a fly lands on someone's head, you know, yeah. and mm-hmm. you take a hammer and you smash them in the head with it, mm-hmm. and you murder them. It's like, mm-hmm. well, Your Honor, I, <laughs> I was just trying to kill a fly. It's like, well, I don't believe you. Oh, well, you're straw manning me. 
I don't know. Like you just, we just have to take everyone at their word. No one can employ deceit as a tactic. Like, well, yeah, but so you're saying all of people arguing about abortion on the pro-life side are employing deceit. I mean, let's break it up. How many are employing? I don't think, I don't think all, I think there's so how many are employing deceit and how many are, how the fuck would I know? I don't know. Well, you're making, if you're going to make an argument that I say enough, enough to enough for it to be notable. Why, but, so why if, but if it's 5%, why would you say, you know, 5% are employing more deceit? Than 5%. Okay. So if it's 20%, why would you tar the other 80% who are operating in good faith by saying that they're, their argument is that they want to control women's bodies. Cause it's, it's more fun. It's yeah, more but interesting. You're, <laughs> <laughs> I don't I mean, know like how. You, wait, well, I mean, like, are, I mean, our audiences on the internet so fucking brain dead. Like, they like, have you never employed hyperbole? Have you never fucking made the case we may, a little we stronger do. than it needed to be made? Just well, like but for it's, comedic it's a, effect, or it's a ne- for but it cre- it's creating a negative stereotype of your, or whatever. You know, I don't, you don't think. I, I, Here's you don't think it's problem. dangerous at all to do that if you have your audience believing for even a second that their entire opposition want to kill or uh, control women's bodies? Wouldn't that maybe mm-hmm. encourage them to think, yeah, fuck these people? Well, them. that's the point, right? I want them to say fuck those people. Yeah, <laughs> but you don't want to go too far because then they might do something. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. The, I'm, all, the, I'm going way further than just voting. But now there, are, now we're talking about the point of uh, that was a. Uh, a actual justice lawyer brought up earlier with like, well, how, how accountable are we for the shit we say? You know, do we believe in free speech or not? So should I be censored because I said something that was like no, too, we're not, too strongly worded? The better argument for the argument of speech here would be, shouldn't you speak accurately instead of dangerously? I don't know if it's dangerous. Yeah, it's because a common talking telling, point. I think, I, there's think, a lot of, I, think, I think there's a lot of people on the, I think there's a lot of people on the right who are fucking, I mean, like, look at their, I mean, actions speak louder than words, right? I think when you look at the totality of actions from right-wing people on this issue, it's like, we're pro-life, we're pro-life, we care so much, we care so much. But then it's like every social program, you know, this guy right here is, uh, well, he's, he said he's pro-choice, but he wants, he wants the, the slave minds uh, back, right? <laughs> no, 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 you, you have to fucking, pay them. Don't be uh, ridiculous, okay, TJ. Well, sure, Jesus, yeah, first, what's wrong with get your you? The minimum cents. wage mine. Here's your okay. little, here's, here's your 10 cents, Billy, whatever the fuck, yeah. We, have you, we could be paying him a company script, right? There we go. No, so you got paid. Sold them. my soul to the company store. I don't know what your beliefs are, so I, I don't know. I could be strawmanning you right now. I probably am, but um, yeah, I don't know. So you what say the that question? the point the point of the video more so then was to rile people up a bit of being being like because you want people to act more and save the sort of rights in relation to this. So you'd rather use but look, I mean, like, when it wait, com- when it comes TJ, to I got a question kids, for you. But when it comes to these kids, though, like. There's so many kids out there that are hungry. And it's like, let's cut the food stamps. Let's do this bullshit welfare to work shit. Let's fucking do everything in our possible. Like, it's just like the George Carlin routine about if you're preborn, you're fine. If you're preschool, you're fucked. They don't mm-hmm. care about anything in your life after you're fucking born. And it all, you notice all these fucking pet topics about Republicans center, center around breeding. They love breeding all of a sudden. It's like their favorite fucking thing in the world. Don't be Wait. gay because gays don't breed. Well, breeding is a lot of you know? people. Wait, TJ, are, are, are you fucking, in a? Uh, are, are you fucking, in, Yeah. Are you in favor of murdering homeless people? Uh, no, not not <laughs> would, not typically. Would actually. you support let it, then then why don't you let them live in your house? Um, I don't know. I got. Uh, I guess I have enough room here. I guess I could probably yeah. let a couple live here. Would it be fair for me if, if you said you shouldn't murder homeless people? Would it be fair for me to respond to you? Well, you're not taking care of them, so you have no say in it. I mean, I would if you were to say to me, like, we should use tax dollars to house homeless people, I'd say, yeah. yeah but that's not really that, the question. So that, well, no, but that isn't a way. Be- me because, like, the, the idea of the pro life position, person, right? But the idea of the pro life position is abortion is murder. So if you're saying, oh, well, you can't be opposed to murder because you won't fund, uh, you know, childhood formula program X from the federal government, that's not really an argument. That's just, but I mean, like, well, it is. You're talking about something completely different. No, I'm not. Because if, because you have to actually look at the practical, real world results of the shit you say, you can make a bold moral declaration about how abortions murder. But the result of that is a bunch of un, unfucking wanted kids running around, a bunch of hungry mouths to feed that people might not have the means to feed. Your policies brought those people into this world. Take some fucking responsibility for them. So if all those programs existed to the, to the extent that you would like, would you change your position on pro-life, pro-choice? 
That's actually a good question. Um, maybe I'd have to reevaluate it. Yeah. I mean, that's a fair answer. Like typically people make this argument, they wouldn't change it no matter what, but you know, I mean, I, I think that it's a strong, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it'd be something to consider. Um, I will point out that these pregnancy centers and all these like church organizations actually do provide formula and clothes and counseling and sure. create support private, groups yeah, and all that. Charities do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's better than saying that somebody should do something in my opinion, like they're actually sure. doing something. Right. Well, I mean, I don't know. You don't know. I don't know what your track record of giving to charity is. You don't know mine. So we could both. Well, I know you, you give to charity. I would. Assume, I've seen you do charity stuff. Right. So, yeah. But I'm saying if they're pro-life and then they're also providing support for the mothers like after out of their own pockets, rather than saying, I'm going to vote for this guy. And then hopefully they'll pass a thing that raises food I would stamps say one percent. I would say those people have a lot more credibility in terms of me believing that they are actually concerned about the fetus. No, but, the, but then like, we, so if those people have the credibility and then you're arguing against them, what's your counter argument other than like, I'm not arguing against them. I'm arguing against the people who believe the other thing. Okay. You know what? Cause like there's the worst version of everything. Oh, you also wanted to know which uh, fascist uh, attributes I had. I remember. Uh, so uh, rejection, rejection of modernism. I think that everyone should have some rejection of modernism, modernism in them. Uh, cult of action for action's sake. There are definitely times when I'm sick of talk and I just want to see something done, even if it doesn't necessarily make sense. Uh, do, but I mean, obviously, fascism is appealing. That's how it's sold to people. Do you uh, understand? Disagreement is treason. I'm definitely very anti-disagreement. Uh, <laughs> appeal to frustrated middle class. That's, yeah. I mean, every, the, who the fuck doesn't? Uh, mm -hmm. Contempt for the weak. Yes. Machismo. Yes. Selective populism. I think everyone's selectively populist. So, um, but I don't know that everybody fits all 14 criteria. I mean, you've hit a, you're hitting a lot of them. You, yeah. yeah didn't that you, was about half. Yeah. That's about seven. Yeah. And if we went through the rest, we might even be able to broadly argue and stuff. I just, I don't know. I find that useless, like entirely. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Do you understand I mean, our if you critique? Say it's do you understand my, our critique on that? Oh, sorry, go ahead. The, do you understand our critique on the 14 points that they seem excessive? I actually, that was the time when, I ha when you guys were talking about that. That was actually when I had to go shoot my video, so I kind of oh, okay. missed that. Okay. But uh, yeah, I don't know. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call you a fascist just because you hit a bunch of those points on yeah, the Yeah, I had yeah. seven out of uh, 14. We, but I, we I, were... think that I, pretty, I think it's like a matter of like, Ex I don't know if it's just about hitting the points. I think it's also about extremity of expression of those points as well. Well, no, I, sure. I, I, I think nationalist, I said that. ethnocentric <laughs> nationalist <laughs> is kind of the real definition of fascism. So, I mean, you don't fit that criteria, right? You don't seem like an ethno nationalist. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even believe in nations. Or okay, well, that matter, would be. Yeah, so. see, you don't that believe it. So, yeah. wait, you don't believe in nations? What do you mean? Uh, I don't. Well, I don't. I obviously believe they exist. Right. I, just I don't think they should. Yeah. So just open borders for all countries? No. No, not open borders. No borders. Okay. Yeah. How is that going to function? I guess logistically. Oh, like as you know, one world government. Oh, um, so a super but, nation. But, uh, Right. Okay. So basically, maybe, it's, maybe you could consider nationalism as like a earth nation. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know. But that's like, I was about to say that's an ideal, but that's mostly just a pipe dream, right? How are we ever going to get there? I mean, I, I, I would assume that where we're at now would probably be a pipe dream to a fucking Neanderthal. Okay, so we agree. Yeah, my whole point is that it, I guess. by the time but, uh, we yeah. get to like Star Trek levels. It's, it's oh, well, I mean, be... I, don't, I don't expect to see this in my I'm not like expecting this to happen tomorrow or something. How um, do you deal with the fact that Chinese day. people don't speak Wait, English? Hang on. <laughs> but my whole point there is that uh, isn't it worthwhile advocating for like policy and change that we can actually get in our timelines instead of like appealing to I would like utopia. Well, I was just I was asked if I was an ethno nationalist. I mean, I was I just said I don't believe in. In nations <laughs> i wasn't like it's not like something i go around advocating that, for non-stop you know i thought so. you did i could have sworn i saw a video oh yeah i mean I've, I've, I've mentioned it you know i think it's a good thing to aspire to oh yeah because i don't know i find the uh, discussion on borders super interesting in general because uh i mean i think they cause yeah. a lot more problems than they solve but that's my opinion obviously mm. people the more right-wing you are the, the less you're going to agree with me huh? well in no, terms of it, actionable policy i mean do, should america have no uh should just let america just let everyone in no criteria no borders control uh, no i don't think that would be uh, good for us now oh, okay so yeah okay so yeah you don't have that position 
No, I don't. Yeah, I, don't I, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't you advocate won't. opening borders. I mean, it would have to be. This would have to be like a, a an international negotiation where all countries like unanimously did it simultaneously. Yeah, Wait, simultaneously so, agree to dissolution towards something else. Right. Right. Okay. Which are, obviously are you, is very far fetched with our current paradigm. Yeah. Are you yeah. down with like mercenaries running running the show and being responsible for most of the uh, military force that's exercised? Um. Mercenary. I mean, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Is what, what would we? What would you qualify as a mercenary versus just like an ordinary troop? A private military contractor. Like, uh, no. Yeah, because that's what the like that's what the whole like piece of Westphalia was meant to resolve. That's the predominance of the nation state. So, like in its function of you know kind of containing the force at the state level, the nation state have actually worked. Now we have some private military contractors. Typically, but they're usually partnered with the United States of America or with an individual nation. They're not oh, sure. you know, well, starting I mean, like, off. Con- yeah, I mean, like just because I don't like a paradigm doesn't mean the paradigm that came before it isn't worse. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean, the nation state solved that problem. But I think that if we had a global society, you know, you could also have whatever government that you know, manages all that would, would provide the military force to whatever extent it was needed. Yeah. <laughs> tax I mean, what, why would they need a military force? I mean, they, 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 I mean, they, they hopefully wouldn't unless they were like needing to quell like a rebellion or something. Which I'm assuming like would a still force. probably be an issue. I mean, yeah, it would be more like a police force, I guess. It'd probably be robots at that point uh, if we survive long enough. I mean, like I, I know we all saw the video of the spot with a uh, a, a machine gun mounted to his back. So I mean, it seems like that's uh, that's not too far off. Was that? I don't think. I don't think that was AI controlled though. I think it was just like a remote, mm-hmm. like a guy with controlling the gun on a remote control robot. Yeah, you might be right about that. So. I didn't look too far into it, but I mean, you know, you just see where it's headed. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Um. Okay. You got I don't your... know where we go from here. In the <laughs> well, just... do we? Did somebody wrote you global homo other? cringe in the chat and just made me laugh. Global, global homo. Yeah. Well, listen, I don't. Well, people don't like globalism in general. I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of, well, actually, I, did I write a video? Did I make that video yet? I don't know. I, I have a video script some floating around somewhere. Oh, the teleprompter thing. I wasn't upset about the teleprompter. I was upset at Sitch for calling my uh, my rant poorly structured. That was what upset. Oh, I apologize. Oh, the teleprompter. Wow. 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 Sitch pulled it straight mm. away. The thing Sitch ruins admit everything for so everyone. The thing with, the, I stand the, thing by with the, the teleprompter is I don't actually have a teleprompter. I just have a Word document open on my desktop that I was like, reading from right uh, yeah i assume you didn't have just, like an actual teleprompter <laughs> yeah and people know i do that i mean i, I talk about it plenty it's not like a, a secret i mean you can see my eyes darting over there and <laughs> it was a lot it of was, people uh, don't recognize the, that though oh well i don't know it was the poorly structured thing that pissed me off because it's like it's structured <laughs> to sound like a rant it's supposed to sound casual i mean and mm. i write the i don't understand the idea that like it's like it reeks of artifice to speak with a teleprompter because like for me, it helps me stay on track. I mean, you see like how fucking long winded shit can get when I'm just like, left to my own devices. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's helpful to have a, a focal um, document, something to help Wait, me. Did, did you guys say you know, stay a, on, like, on track? Did you guys say it was bad to have anything close to a script or I don't remember. No, Adam was just saying that he didn't like that. It was so visually apparent that he was reading oh, okay. from something. He well, was saying that maybe the, you should get a teleprompter so that way it's over the camera and then you bother <laughs> Adam less. Well, my setup's a little weird. Uh, I have four monitors here and the position of the camera means that if I had a teleprompter here, it'd be very difficult to see all four of my monitors. It's already kind of a struggle uh, to juggle oh, all this. They got shit. little ones that go over the lens. It's it's amazing what technology really? can okay. do. Really? Wow. See, I didn't yeah. know that. All right. Yeah, Thanks, Sean. Know. I'll be, I'll look into that. <laughs> And we we used to use one when I used to work at a real job with real people, but now I go unscripted now. So I am saying any kind of a script is garbage, garbage. Just just Shit. think about the words all day and then like say it and then fix it in editing. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's the problem is I don't like having to edit. I try to avoid editing if I can. So doing it mm-hmm. in one take. That's why I didn't. You cut know out what? That, uh, the the part where the video. Also, I thought it was pretty funny. And dude, that's no a audio. shame because I had no audio to it. I got OG memories here. I remember the distressed watcher when you used to edit a lot more, make some, make some videos on movies and stuff. What happened to that? Oh, I don't know. 
<laughs> we, we can all we can all have a bad I've performance. I've always hated so. editing, and like the less I can do of it, the better. That's, Did, my, did that's it, my belief. Does it weird you out that Adam legitimately me. thought that your face paint was some kind of filter? Like he can't tell the difference between something that's real and like CGI. <laughs> on, I Adam, mean, I just, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, like whatever. I mean, I, I feel like it's kind of complimentary because it means that something that my face paint was good enough to look like something that could be a filter. So <laughs> I'll view that as a positive. Mine's face paint too, so that's cool. <laughs> wow, very very well painted. Yeah. It's incredible face paint. <laughs> I like the cat. Sorry about that. So let's continue our dialogue. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. Is there anything even left to? Well, I mean, well, well, the, sure, these I guys, mean, these guys, I just these guys are yeah. like drifting off into like substanceless. I mean, your critique how, of us, how dare your critique Shut of us? I think. Well, I'm dead serious. You guys are like completely all over the place. Well, we're okay, bring up free speech. Adam, then. That was the one. Well, I mean, the whole point earlier, is right? like, listen, we're sitting here. Look, any TJ, uh -huh. anyone can have a bad performance like sure. we, we judged you on your performance and we said the performance was was See, not I, I disagree not i don't great. know like well, this no, could I, just the, be like a difference the, in sensibilities because like to me the way you guys do your show a lot of times is like way too low-key and i'm trying to match well, we that have energy. we have bad performances but, too i mean like anyone I was the last show i was almost fucking way too high strung yeah of course of course so but like the the performance is one level of substance but i mean you actually made the video about freedom of speech where you were saying that because people the, because the right wing is hypocritical about freedom of speech that may put you in a position where you feel like you can be hypocritical about or or not necessarily hypocritical but you're like freedom of Just speech is not important it. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's the substance of your video. And we covered all of that I would say, later on. I mean, well, I didn't get to that part, obviously. But Yeah, I know. The, That's why, why the, my first question, why did you watch so little of our video? Well, no, it's, we can move on. Why you watch the about the free speech issue? Right, so, yeah. Right. Well, uh, so who goes first? <laughs> well, okay. So the, so in your video, it sounded like your argument was that because the you think the right is hypocritical on free speech, that therefore... The left should just throw free the concept of free speech away. I think people should just start to be honest about what they really believe. And as far as I can tell, most people use the term freedom of speech to bolster their position when it's convenient, and then they throw it in the waste bin when it's no longer convenient. And I think people should just admit that and stop kind of trying to lionize this concept stop trying to disingenuously present themselves as some sort of like free speech absolutist and just admit that they use it when it's advantageous and then they throw it away when it's not. So, so I, I agree with you on that point, but as a society, since we know that that is the, the tendency of humans to do, if you believe in a society where freedom of speech is important and there's some sort of mechanistic process, it's some sort of mechanistic process for us to work out our disagreements without coming to, to blows, violence, sure. then somebody has to police the, these hypocritical people that are all around us. And they're on both sides. I'll admit they're on both sides. Like they're the, the, the woke people are the first to throw free, free speech away when they're winning. And the, Christian conservatives are the first people to throw free speech away when they're winning. But somebody has to step up and say, hey, freedom of speech is something important. Freedom of speech is something that we need, especially the people who are end up in the minority who can be subjugated by, by other people. They're the ones that need it most. Sure, but then you also see, you know, like there's video of, a uh, remember I covered it a few years back, but, but uh, I, I'm, I'm Richard saying, Spencer, where he was, uh, you know, he's a mind, he was like, you know, uh, obviously he was a pretty fringe figure mm -hmm. and you know, he was talking to one of his little flunkies and stuff. And they're sitting there, you know, and they'd made this big freedom of speech argument to defend their right to go out and espouse their views. But, you know, when they thought no one was watching or no one was listening or whatever, you know, one of the guys was like, so do we, do we believe in freedom of speech? Like, obviously he knows the answer, but he's like, in this context, in this moment, do we? And Richard, of course we don't. No, 
Absolutely well, well, not. Uh, but uh, you know, TJ, so I mean, like, I've already conceded. I already agree with you. I agree well, right, but, with but, you but, but that I'm, most I'm people the, want to get hip- rid of I'm not freedom making the hypocrisy speech. point here. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm not making the hypocrisy point with that. I'm, I'm, what I'm, the point I'm making with that is that there are people out there who will use our naive love of freedom to destroy freedom. Well, that's why would we give up freedom in response to that? Yeah, that's my question. That's a point of your video that you're you're saying. Okay, well, it's like since we've it's lost like, it, like let's just give up. It's like deciding to get stabbed in the hand rather than get stabbed. It's like why would you block if you're trying not to get stabbed? Why would you block the knife with your hand? It's like so I don't get stabbed in the fucking heart. It's because this damage mm-hmm. is not as bad as this damage. So you're so, so if you're, I can give up this freedom here to not be stabbed in the hand, if it prevents me being stabbed in the heart. I'm going to take the hand stab. Right. So you're saying speech prohibitions will lead to some to our safety. Freedom. You're saying like the you have left to, you free have to speech maximize prohibitions freedom. would. But some, uh, I mean, like you can't. I mean, it's like you can't just fucking have a system. If if you just leave everything to its own devices and just say, you know what, non-interference. This is basically like the libertarian philosophy. It's like you know what, true freedom is if. Everybody just steps aside and just lets things happen. There's well, no does, regulation. Everything just goes the way it's going to go. Does anyone in here think that, out of curiosity, that we should let it all to its own devices? No for, TOS for or rules? For, for speech? speech? No. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm not a free speech absolutist. When, when, yeah. when you separate... In general. Just when like you separate out... When no, you separate no, I, out I'm just the, curious. When you separate out the you know fighting words, threats, we, we all understand that. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Because well, I believe I that free speech is a good in and of itself. And TJ seems to be making the case that freedom of speech is only good if it produces other secondary good o- outcomes. Well, no, I would say I would say beyond that, like sometimes you have to curtail speech to protect speech broadly. Yeah, I, I, I assume that was your point. You're saying like the left's prohibition of speech will prevent a greater and worse right. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say anything for the left or whatever. I'm just talking about my own beliefs here. Well, you're on the left, right? Sure. Yeah. So, but I only no, speak for my, I, assume, I can only speak for myself because, like, there's a lot of people on the left that certainly don't no, speak fair. for me. Um, so, you know, I don't want to presume to speak for them either. Just so to clarify, would, would you agree with this characterization of your position being that the left's prohibition of speech is in order to prevent a greater and worse prohibition by the right of speech eventually? Um, trying to stop. I, I don't like. To, I don't like taking it to the group level, but sure, I guess. Just broaden it out. Sure. Because you think a great it, it you think it cancels out a greater evil, I guess is the point. Yes. Yeah. And a greater repression. Well, I, Meanwhile, I, I, I guess the response argument would just be, yeah, but it's a fundamental thing that we should believe in and fight for no matter what. Well, it's I mean, there's there's two responses. One would be that you can't destroy the thing you want to protect in order to protect it in the future. Well, you're not destroying. I mean, you're not I mean, like it's not destroying it <laughs> is the thing. Of course like, it is. Wait, as soon as you say we can okay. curtail free speech, you know, in order to prevent, you know, right wingers. Do you not believe X. in any curtail? I mean, you believe in curtailing freedom of speech in certain instances, right? Of course. Yeah, but you're, you're, that he doesn't believe. How come, how come your not instances co- don't destroy it, but mine do? Because mine are about people lying intentionally. Mine are about protecting intellectual property. Mine aren't about ideological reasons. Okay. So that's the distinction. It's, it's about ideology well you're you're essentially making the marcusean repressive tolerance argument right. that we have to make some repression in order to prevent uh un, in order to prevent the evil right wing i'm not yeah i'm not familiar with that argument so i mean like yeah maybe i am maybe i'm not i don't know i, I, I mean you're familiar right you're familiar with know. it in that you used to make videos condemning this very idea for years i remember i condemned the carl popper it was one of the worst videos and worst arguments ever made but like you know, I understand if you're not familiar with the, this by name. But essentially, this is the the argument that this guy is made par- is, is that it the like right wing is tolerance kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, it, I did make videos against that, and that would probably be one of the very few things I would uh, definitely completely disown. Hmm. So I would say I've, I've completely flipped on that for sure. Mm-hmm. I don't think the arguments that I made then hold water. I think they were naive. I think they're idealistic. I think it was, I used to have a a sort of faith that in the open marketplace of ideas, truth would always win out over lies, but I've seen that that's not true. um, And so I've readjusted my worldview. Do you think think that in in a more repressed society where, you know, the dominant ideology is trying to prevent these fringe ideologies, you know, with all the best intentions from coming to the forefront, that will lead to truth winning out? 
Yeah, there's a, a there's uh, a tangible. That. I was saying, do you think that in in the world that you're creating, where you're trying to just get rid of these bad opinions that might in the future make society worse, you know, all for good intentions, that mm. that will work out to truth coming to the forefront? Uh, I mean, I, one would hope. I mean, there um, there's so many tangible adva- uh, uh, examples right now, though, of you know, scientific research being stifled because people, their research comes to conclusions that people can categorize as hate speech. So they basically have to retract. Well, all this, all this scholarship around sex and gender, if they come to the wrong ideological conclusions, they make them. So, I mean, in, I just, you're, you're saying that you're, you've been dis, you know, disillusioned by the idea that freedom of speech. Would I don't. Well, lead I mean, I, I would say that I don't truth. think any scientific paper should be, uh, you know, censored or. But they're being censored to be under reviewed or whatever. They're being censored under the rubric that you know s- speech should be censored because uncomfortable truths can do tangible damage I would never to certain say communities. The, so Yeah, I don't I don't really buy into that notion. So I would never buy into the notion that any sort of truth of any kind needs to be censored unless maybe it's like military secrets or something of that mm-hmm. nature. Right. But I no, I'm yeah, just I'm only you, bringing it up because I'm I'm saying you you've made a declaration that you think truth is important and you've been disillusioned I mean, by I the idea. Not, I think there's not much of a difference between what I believe and what anyone else on this uh, panel believes. I think everyone here makes except exemptions and right, exceptions to freedom e- of speech. Even even, yeah, even but in, mine are being treated by a different standard because of criteria that frankly don't I don't, I don't know, they don't really make any sense well, to okay, me. Well, okay, this is this did, did is okay. The, let me wait, well, hold on. Let, let this me, is what's happening. You're okay. doing what I said, I don't know if you listen to this part. You're doing what I said is called I'm attacking the mot, okay. which is that you know, you're saying like that packing the, packing the mots? attacking them. You're you know, you're familiar with okay. Mott and Bailey. I assume as an atheist, right? No. Okay, Mott and Bailey is like when you say, "Oh, it, you know," refers to Mott and ba- Bailey Castle. You know, the mm-hmm. Mott is the wall, and the Bailey is the castle inside of it. And okay. this is like, oh, the Mott is the forward-facing so, argument that someone like puts out. That is. Is it, is it Mott or is it Moat? It's Mott. I've always said Moat. M O T. You can conceptualize it like a Moat, but it's okay. It's a mot. Um, All right, gotcha. The mot is the forward-facing argument that someone will put out that is defendable. So like right. using abortion, for example, you know, right. the right wing says, we care about, you know, the life of the fetus. That's the mot. Because it's, mm-hmm. okay, you know, it's, it's socially acceptable to say you care about babies. Right. But the Bailey is the quote-unquote real secret argument. And you're right. saying with abortion, like that's, oh, they want to control women's bodies. Right? Okay, right. fair enough, yeah. Okay, well, that's what the mot and Bailey is. The, okay. the problem and you're saying so you're saying that that's the thing that's happening with free speech you're saying you know the people on the right are are using this mot of we care about free speech but that's not really what they care about what they really care about is the bailey argument that they just I wouldn't I would be, not I, mean, I would not exclusively leverage that criticism at the right by the way but yeah oh, I'm just re- referencing in your video sure um uh, cuz I think you said like oh they just want to call people the n word they just want to be bigoted racist you know blah sure. blah blah, blah, yeah. blah blah okay mm-hmm. so the reason the mot and bailey argument Ha- which I mean, this happens in every argument you probably ever had in your entire life, where you at least sense that maybe someone is kind of giving you like a better argument than they what their true intention is. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason that that plays out is because they're giving you the socially acceptable argument that everyone agrees upon. And right. the problem is sometimes people get so fed up with it. They're so uh, focused on trying to get to quote unquote, their secret argument that they end up sacrificing the socially acceptable argument. And that's kind of what you're doing where you're saying, oh, well, because you, they're using free speech to defend their true nefarious intentions, I think you have this backwards free speech. Dish. We have to do away with free speech. The Mott and Bailey thing, I think you got it backwards. It's a, no, mor- it's a moral Mott and the badass Bailey. No, I just mean that the Bailey oh, is the, the harder to defeat Bailey. argument. Never the Mott is the easier to defeat argument. Uh... Regardless. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that's well, I mean, like whatever. The, the concept, I think, is, is sounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just, yeah, okay. No yeah, I, I, don't I, really, I, I don't know. I don't really. Uh, so wait. So let me just try to like. Uh, no, you're actually you're, you're wrong. Hold on. I don't even know why you said that. I'm, I'm correct. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't th- I don't think you are. I can, okay. I'll <laughs> send right, you a picture. I'll let you guys Seriously. work this out while I just. I was, uh, was going to say, I've yeah. used this nope. several let's, times. I don't think you've used let's it not right. Let's not get caught up on Mott and Bailey. It's not. Go right ahead. Let's get uh, back to the. Okay, so let me me see if I understand what you're saying here. So, 
regardless of what's the mot, what's the Bailey, all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> regardless of that, right. um, what you're saying is there's a so there's a socially percept there's a socially acceptable forward facing position and there's a secret, more nefarious position, right? Right. Um, that's easier to defeat or at least more unpopular. Yes. So uh, what you're saying is that I am looking at the Republican uh, version of that where it concerns something like abortion, say, mm -hmm. and I am... Well, let's um, use free speech because that's a little... Okay, more. well, free speech then. So I'm looking at their use of like, hey, we believe in free speech, but really their actual intentions are they, they're using it you know, on issues where they think it can advance them, but then other times they're actually against it. Right. Um, and I'm saying, you think that I'm using that basically as like a justification to say, well, maybe the whole shebang is, is, is a fraud or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Let's just tear um, down the, the mod. Let's tear down the wall of the free speech yeah. argument completely. So let's just get rid of the socially acceptable thing because they're using it as cut. So basically like they're using it as cover. So let's just fucking uh, erode that. Let's just get rid of that. Exactly. So that we can exactly. cut to the meat of where they're at basically. Right. Yes. Okay. I get you. Um, so why I don't think I'm doing that is because, um, I would liken it more to, um, let me see if I can come up with a fucking, uh, metaphor or analogy or something off, off, off of the top of my head here. Right, let's just fucking not even fuck with metaphors. Basically what it, what it is, is like, okay, so you have a right wing that's trying to come to power, uh, but like what ideas need to be censored? I think it might be, might make more sense. I think it might make more sense to focus on like what sort of things I would advocate where, what sort of instances I'd be like, Hey, here's where like some censorship would be useful. Um, and to me, you know, it would be deceit on a mass level because I find it very strange that it's okay for one person. Like if one person goes and deceives another and says, Hey, you know, I got this like magical uh, flimity flam device that's going to, you know, cure your cancer and do all these crazy things for you. And it's just, you know, a thousand dollars or whatever. And, and mm -hmm. you know, any disease you have is that person is guilty of, of uh, any number of crimes, right? That's a con man. Uh, but if you do, if you, if you tell an equally deleterious lie en masse, it's like, oh, well now all of a sudden it's like, well, that's their freedom of speech. Right. So, um, I feel like maybe that kind of thing should be a little bit more examined, uh, truncated, dealt with. Um, and I think that's a, I don't know, it's a controversial opinion in a lot of circles, but I really don't understand why. Uh, because... Do you have a specific example for the mass one? Because if you try to sell a cancer cure to the public and you call it a cancer cure, you'll face the same consequences like whether you're doing it around the block or nationally. See, like a lot of the stuff because you, because of YouTube's policies is actually kind of hard to discuss without putting this this channel at sort of like monetization uh, risks or, mm -hmm. or graver ones. But you know, there was a lot of things that happened around, you know, uh, COVID and the election and things of that nature where there was some deceits that were engaged in that you know, I think probably should have been treated a little bit more seriously. We we covered the January six hearings, and I mean they didn't nuke our channel. I don't know, I don't know anything about the January six. He's, he's talking about them. COVID. Like you're talking about potential COVID misinformation about like mm -hmm. different medicines or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, horse paste and uh, things of that nature. That's right. Right. Or just well, the, just the idea that it's like not a real thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like oh, it doesn't exist, or you know, Jesus well, will protect us, or whatever. You, are you going to step in and say like Sitch? Come on. We this is easy. But, well, we know but, we the 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 trick with truth is it's really hard to figure out like who has the truth and curtailing freedom of speech. I would argue is hindering your ability to come to truth. Over I would say the 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 maxim, if it's a maxim, I'd use would be you know you're entitled to your own uh, opinion. You're not entitled to your own facts. Yeah, but, sure, finding, but all finding arguments the facts. now are yeah. kind of we're not really in a world where people argue their opinions. We're kind of in a world where people argue what the facts are. Right. And well, that's exactly what I'm trying to remedy because that's yeah, not really I, for debate. The, the <laughs> you problem know, like is facts that facts don't tend to be super debatable things, but the, mm -hmm. it seems like they are in this this current social context, this paradigm, and that's why I think we need to break it. The, the problem is otherwise, that otherwise there is no truth. I mean, I, if I you want to just if you want to just live in a totally postmodernist you, fuck the truth world, then I mean, like, I, I, do I, do I don't. The, the problem is that we we've lost, so many people have lost such faith with our institutions 
And that's the only way for to like an institution to make a fact claim. And if we don't have faith in our medical institutions, like if, if we look at our medical institutions right now in America, which are like the, the BLM protests are a, a good example. So before the BLM, before George Floyd uh, died and all the BLM protests took off, you had people on the right who were coming out and they were protesting against uh, mass mandates and lockdowns, things of that nature. And we had all these, you know, institutions and experts and doctors and the news would all come out and say, look at these assholes. They're getting in large protest groups and they're spreading, you know, more COVID. They're killing us. Right. And then as soon as the BLM protests come out, you had this bizarre like reversal where you had the news reporting that, you know, 100 or 1,000 doctors signed off saying that, well, actually, because the protests are outside, the, you know, it's totally fine for, you know, thousands and thousands of people across the country to get in mass and, and protest these, institu- you know, protest against systemic violence. Right. So it's when things like that happen that people just basically don't trust anything the institutions say. Right. Don't well, trust, but this is because like, fact finding institute to make that because, decision. But this is exactly because people have gotten to this point Mm -hmm. in their egos or whatever where they legitimately think that reality bends to their whims that facts just (laughs) bend around what their will and that whatever they want to be true just is and like yeah the whole shebang like the covid didn't become less contagious just because you now agree with the protest that's silly right obviously that's silly um Doctors signing notes that say that like, oh, well, magically now the entire nature of the disease has changed is obviously stupid. Um, the fact of the matter is you you didn't like that protest, so it must be bad and spreading disease. And you did like this one. So, oh, no, never mind. That doesn't spread disease anymore. Right, right, right. Well, so, I mean, like, the, plus, like, they- like the sort of like just like casual dismissal of truth that I'm talking about here, like. It you can't just decide the truth based on your ideology. You have to. It has to be the other way around. No, I mean I agree a hundred percent. But I, what I'm saying is that if you're going to have some arbiter kind of lay out, especially like in terms of misinformation, mm-hmm. you know, in politics, if you have an arbiter lay out and say this is misinformation, this is against fact, the only thing that could do that is an institution that people have trust in to act non politically, right. and. No one has faith in that, and I don't have faith in any institution. And I, that was just the example I was bringing it with the with the COVID protest. I mean, well, if, if we get to the point of having no faith in any institution, which I think we're kind of yeah already there, right? Then like you just you don't have a society at that point. But a society, specific- a society without institutions mm-hmm. is not it can't function. Yeah, but you're, t- you're talking <laughs> but about giving those with- institutions the ability to censor people's speech, though. We're saying that's bad. But but specifically with the virus, like the the uh, the signing the letter saying racism is a real pandemic, ridiculous. But the most ridiculous thing is that what we found out now is that outdoor transmission wasn't really that big of a thing. So anybody could have protested. That was actually one of the safer things that you could have done. Mm-hmm, but all sure. of our medical institutions were like doing lockdowns and preventing people from going outside and exercising. And this was done by, you know, the U.S. government, the European governments. So if you were going to censor speech in the name of fighting against COVID misinformation, all of the authorities agreed that telling you that actually outside's not as dangerous as inside, they would have called that the misinformation. So you're not even preventing the harms that you would try to right. do. Well, that's why there has to be, but you know, that's why there has to be an actual standard that's just beyond like it has to be as removed as possible from human beings and our biases, because that's mm-hmm. the problem. That's exactly what I'm trying to remove from the equation to the greatest extent possible. Like it should but, be as it should be based on raw science. But if your example is something that is novel and we're not sure how it's going to mutate, we're not sure how it's going to affect a broad population and all these other things, then like your example of the thing you're trying to prevent is a chaotic, evolving situation where this board would not sure. be able I mean, to like, exist. And if that's the, if that's what the reality reflects, then that's the what the policy should reflect. If it's like, hey, we just like this thing is evolving rapidly and we don't know what it's going to fucking do, then the policy needs to reflect that. But that's like, but that's your example, though, for why you would censor speech. But obviously things changed. And like, and then there was ridiculous things like people. Are you saying the rules shouldn't adapt to the change in the situation? Because it it adapts, it adapts fast. So 
essentially if some if a group of your well, scientists we have whatever a, we have a society that and it's not i mean well covid's not part of society but you, you know what i mean we have a society where you know social change happens way faster than institutional change and uh, that's that's another issue like there's like our institutions are slow they're lumbering mm -hmm. they react to what was going the conditions yesterday rather than conditions today nothing is effective Everything seems gridlocked, um, you know, so there's, I mean, it's no wonder people have lost faith in, in institutions. Um, but yeah, I think this, these are exactly the sort of things that need to be repaired. Like we can't, like, it seems to me like the argument being made here is like, well, people don't trust institutions, so don't even try to solve anything. No, no, it's well, not, that's not, that's not the argument. The argument is, is that your example was COVID. Things changed a bunch. Things change, positions change from all the experts on this specific issue so right. many times. Based but if you had evidence. a system where you were like, listen, everybody who's going against the stated current idea of the truth is a danger to society and needs to be censored, then we'd still be doing ridiculous things that we were doing in the beginning, like sanitizing surfaces, by the way, also a waste of time. And 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 that that doesn't help anything. It makes the situation how worse. We would, how would we still be doing that? Because because there would be no, What's your logic behind that? There so, would be no so challenge what, to the institutional logic that is put well, I mean, forward. What, what you're essentially like making things the art. Things didn't change because of challenges in the institution. They changed because of new research. But, which but, challenged the previous research. What like, you're but essentially. There's, but, wait, but there's a difference in being like, hey, guys, we don't know. More research and study is needed into this versus like. COVID's a hoax. Nothing. The vaccine's full of you know no, but, nanobots. You know, like, sure, those, sure. like there's things that are like, hey, I mean, like no mm -hmm. one should say we shouldn't take like an edge case of like, hey, we're, the science isn't settled yet. We don't know about this. More research is needed versus like stuff that's just like demonstrably false. Like but, those aren't the same. I, I don't thing. know like, why. You're, why are you're you trying guys trying to act like every gray area would be like a case for but like some, censorship. Do you, why do you why agree, are you guys you why are you guys arguing some, in the context of covid when you have I'll such move it a, off, I'll move it look, off of that look, I'm just look, look, Sean that, you have such a better wrong. argument in the sex and gender stuff because literally research is being you know denied because it affects you know marginalized communities they're literally censoring people's speech over this because they've come to the wrong conclusions. It's it's uh, I don't it's know Galileo. It's that, Galileo so. all over again. But you're nope, sitting here but, arguing about COVID, which is a well. The the it was the example that he brought up. Yeah, but, but, but I, my, my what, issue what is, examples is it, do we have where freedom of speech is actually tangibly hurting scientific inquiry? It's the sex and gender stuff, is it not? Where freedom of speech is hurting that, or yeah, or lack the lack of, of freedom, of speech. the lack of freedom of speech, yeah, well, yeah, it's a, I, it's a domineering ideology. But this, but, but the issue I'm having is that obviously, TJ, you agree that if you're going to have a standard like this, then you're going to have to have some institutions to, to enforce this standard, right? Sure. Yeah. Whether truth. It be national scientific, or scientific truth only. Correct. Yeah. But but you also acknowledge that science is is an evolving process, sure, and that people do experiments like, and sometimes they're not even like your official designated scientists, like they're mm -hmm. actually like randos that are out there. Sure. So if you if you create a standard where where like it's not acceptable to propose alternatives to what the current wait, wait, established, wait, 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 wait. but that's not what I said. I didn't say it's not acceptable to propose alternatives. I said it's not acceptable to lie yeah but those There's alternatives will be perceived alternat those Wait, alternatives will orthodoxy. be perceived of as a lie then fuck perception don't worry about perception just well, worry you've, about what you've already actually said is or isn't true but that's but wait the part of the problem like this came up with your time about fraud is that you know when joe rogan is talking about uh whatever the horse thing's called i can't think of the name ivermectin ivermectin yeah, yeah. or even people before that were talking about hydrochloropin or whatever yeah. Hydrochloroquine. I don't think I, I don't think any of these people were like, I know this isn't actually doing anything and I'm lying about it. These people really believe this stuff. Right. Right. Or so they thought lying. it was worth experimenting with, like, you know, testing or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, if they want to say, like, hey, I think that this has potential as a drug and maybe there's some efficacy here, then I'm mm -hmm. fine with that. That's what they were um, saying. <laughs> and well, no, but I think some people were fucking going a little further than that. When some people started hailing it as like this cures COVID, like right. 
that's to me a lie versus yes. like there might be some efficacy in this of treating COVID. Like it's a subtle but important distinction. Between, what about like, what about when the mainstream is something, what about yeah, when the mainstream media calls it horse paste or you know horse tranquilizers when it's actually used as a drug for human beings? I mean, then they're the ones lying. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, like if if it comes down to that, I mean, I don't think every, I think you could possibly censor every single lie that happens. But like, mm -hmm. if there's a lie that is uh, deleterious to society demonstrably, and it can be 100 percent verifiably proven as a lie, then yeah, there should be some kind of crackdown on that. Yeah. The the I mean, the if, trouble sure, is where, I don't know. where if you're someone finding fucking, if someone truth. fucking if someone goes out there and says that this is like horse pace and then you have to ask like is this a hyperbolic statement is this a humorous statement is this meant to be like a derisive mocking statement or are they genuinely genuinely saying like this is not a drug for human beings and this is only a horse drug you know because there's always going to be you know gray areas of, of, right. of speech i think that it's like if anytime there's a gray area you should definitely you should definitely side on the side of freedom anytime someone wants to question something Mm -hmm. side with freedom they should obviously have the but like if someone what i'm talking about is the case the the edge cases where people demonstrably put forth ideas that are like proven false or that there is no evidence to support whatsoever what about right. people who suppress ideas example. that are actually true COVID is a hoax would be an example sure or you know Oh, be careful though, because what I mean, that's such a broad right? statement. Or there is a God, so. for that matter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to, to be fair, on the COVID is a hoax one, for example, what if just someone said like, nah, I think the numbers are exaggerated. If they said that, I'm assuming your line is like, okay, they nah, can say that. Nah, I think, so their, state, their exact statement is, nah, I think the numbers are exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, if they prefaced it with, I think. They're not claiming any sort of like actual okay, knowledge so they, or authority there. So I mean, I mean, it seems like it, this, it sounds like something that someone would be casually saying at like a family dinner or something. I, mean, I don't think you could crack down on that. So like, if they just went a little bit further and said, you know what, those numbers are just exaggerated. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially if they were like in a mass media, like if they were just like if Alex Jones. If someone if someone made the declaration, the COVID numbers are exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. I think that you could do something. Yeah, because my worry with stuff like that is that it just it it's going to become a cancer of like uh, once that's a trigger for getting banned, it's like all kinds of different statements that are really quick or just casual can then end up getting you banned as well. Mm -hmm. And then well, I mean, it I starts fucking, being like, well, how come COVID's yeah, the only one? We banning, should start doing that. For I don't know that banning subjects, from right? the internet, like net or whatever, is like the solution of that. But you know, what do you think it is? Oh, I don't know. I think it depends on the forum and who's saying it and. You know what like their explanation I, was, and whether they're willing to rescind it. A uh, number of things. I'm, I'm just, I, I gun for the classic. Like somebody get that man a debate with someone else who thinks the opposite, and let's see who's, uh, see what's going on. Let's get some ideas clashing. That's my favorite. Well, the problem is it. that you know maybe the person who <laughs> has the falsehood is like a, a charismatic. You know, I agree uh, with you. I hate talking, it. good like, looking. You know, ultimate. You know, a rhetorician with. You know, big vocabulary Look and at this. very Double, persuasive. Right? Not arguments. reading off a teleprompter. Person, yeah, that's <laughs> that kind of stuff. And yeah, then the, you know, the person who's, uh, who's arguing the other side is like a weak willed so, sort of like. What, uh, what if what if you had somebody who thought like, you know, like something that's like damaging to our institutions and could go into problems like that? Uh, let's say a candidate, we'll call him Bernie Sanders, uh, had the Democratic <laughs> primary stolen from him. Like mm -hmm. would that would that qualify as something that needs to be censored? Um, I think that if you made it as an outright statement, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I think if you said like, "Hey, you know, I think there's some reasons. I think this uh, the election needs to be looked into. I think there's some discrepancies here that don't make sense, and I think that the DNC might have engaged in some tactics that are against the principles for which they claim to stand." What if, What if those tactics were having more black people vote for Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton? I mean, you know. <laughs> Uh, that they don't. I don't think they had anyone do anything. I think those black people chose to do that. But that—that's why he lost the primaries, though. Sure. I mean, I think that there's. I mean, obviously, you know, you get less votes, you lose the fucking election. There's no arguing that. But you know, that doesn't yeah. mean that there wasn't some chicanery. Tell that to in Trump, buddy. Some different at. Well, what about Trump? Tell that to Trump, buddy. 2016, <laughs> less votes won the election. Well, yeah, that's true. Electoral college. <laughs> 
Out of curiosity, because you said like one of the extreme problems we'll end up with is a big charismatic leader in a bubble sort of arguing with an idiot, all clips of idiots, and then they'll only galvanize their audience further and further and further. So I couldn't... Well, not necessarily idiots, just people who aren't charismatic, people who don't really, you know, like, well, I, which I, by the I, way, a lot of scientists don't tend to be very charismatic people. That's fair, nerds. but I, would, I was yeah. also just going to say, like, to be fair, you should worry that they would argue with stupid people too, because stupid people can fuck up a whole argument if they don't understand it, right? Like if they... Sure. I believe in the good argument. Or if they but I pretend to argue. understand uh, yeah, things that too. they don't. Like, um, know, but obviously the reverse extreme. If he, if, like if, he was, if he was bringing up the Martin Bailey shit and I was just like, oh, yeah, I follow. I know exactly it, what you're talking about. In that universe, <laughs> right? In that oh, universe, yeah, I know all about that. If, say, for example, we had someone on YouTube who was doing that, we'd still have all of those people being able to take that video and then respond to it themselves, probably efficiently. And so the, there's still that fight going on. Meanwhile, I think the extreme of the other side would be the oh yes we've curtailed you know this 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 the, and now it's like wait did we just step on something that's actually true and then it's just like yeah but it, it didn't it, we didn't know it for sure at the time and so it just it just fell a bit off well i mean so that's why I, like you it. have to if there's any uncertainty there has to just be a defaults towards uh you know free speech mm -hmm. well you know what the next question is right like who decides that I mean, hopefully it should be decided by more than one person. <laughs> I don't think what you happens? Wanna, I don't think you want to put that. I don't think you want to put that in the hands of a person. And honestly, I, I feel like as as much as possible, you should take human beings out of the process. But you know, what what happens? The problem it faces every time, though, right? That's like the end of the dialogue tree is the Ministry of Truth, basically. <laughs> Which is like, right. well, no, the Ministry of Truth was a, an institution that was designed to propagate misinformation. This is an institution designed well, yeah. to curtail it completely. I'm, I'm more so. But that's not how power uh, works. Referencing it mockingly, like that's what right. we can. Well, end yeah, up I mean, like I've heard, the, I've heard this argument before. I mean, this yeah, is yeah. like the common argument that comes up when I put this position out there. So yeah. Yeah, and, and it's well, it's the reason. But, I mean, why it's like, I, well, it's just like, well, you know, anything's going to be corrupted and blah 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 blah. I mean, like. Like it's it's tedious and tiresome to me because you know there's like one it just comes back around to this idea like why even have any institutions then if everything is just going to be if any power we give anyone with the best of intentions is going to ultimately be corrupted then just give up on fucking well, but, life well this it, it, this is give why up on, this give up on improving anything give no up no but, but, but wait, wait, that's my whole point of, no, no 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 but we, we, we resort hold we on the like, no no the, so yield, you're, you're just like you know just yield no no to, you're like, making oh, well no i give up you know we're not going to reverse the boat we're saying you fight anyway you're making inevitably collapse into the entropy of corruption i think that's more your side than ours though but you're making you're practically saying, Let, let's give it to the Ministry of Truth. Fuck it. What else? We can't do any better. And we're and, saying, and no, fight for the ideas. Fight for them. Say, no, nah, you're fucking wrong. This is the right idea. <laughs> and look, well, I'm, I'm in favor. I'm in favor of a government with some democratic elements in it. But there, but due to the fact that the history of the world is authoritarian government after authoritarian government, I want built into the Constitution or the document that founds that government blocks on the power that they can use and that's not because i'm against any institutions or any progress going forward it's just that i know that if you don't explicitly limit the government from doing this thing then they will do it historically right. well that's why checks right. and balances have to be a part of any system that's proposed well i think the broader systemic flaw i guess or problem i have with with the argument you're laying out is that i mm -hmm. think ultimately Free speech is the process or is the tool that can keep instit is the only thing maybe that can keep institutions from being to keep institutions on the path of being truth seeking organizations. Yeah, because well, if you remove case, free worked. speech from that, <laughs> then they have no. It doesn't matter. They can do whatever they want. I mean, who, you just, we don't remove freedom of speech. You know, you have like certain curtailings of fucking aspects of speech, just like we already do. If yeah, but you're you're conflating as possible, right? As few as possible. That's what, yeah. that's what anyone should be asking. Well, but you want as few as possible, and you don't want any. You obviously don't want anything that, like, you don't want to censor anybody's opinion. You don't mm -hmm. want to censor questions. You don't want to censor like, this is a gray area of unsettled science or unsettled fucking fact. Like, that there's is no being point. censored right now. That's kind of now, what the examples we were trying to go through were. Like, yeah, but you, you're but I mean, you're you're also like, like you're you're pushing like a Marcusean tolerance thing, which you know your fellow travelers don't even respect the scientific method or reason anyway so like the idea that you would use this as a standard when i don't really care about fellow travel I speak um, sean myself, are you so trying deliberately really to change the subject as much as no possible? no i'm, I'm, I'm not i'm not trying to change the subject it I'm feels just saying, like you like, are you know, really like, bit like you're you're totally doing this is technically a what aboutism what about it, you no guys no it's are, not a, it's not a what aboutism i'm not saying what about this i'm just saying that well you're why, saying like, like they don't what, even what follow if you have science. people's 
We're missing precious seconds. Hey, TJ, genuine uh -huh. question. What's the significant difference between hyperbole and misinformation? Um, hyperbole tends to be have an el element of uh, facetiousness to it, I guess. Is that not very interpretable? Yeah. And therefore, in a in a world where misinformation is getting curtailed a lot, once of again, you know, like always side, always err on the side of freedom, right? Well, so oh, when it, okay, but wait, you're <laughs> not though. That's the wait, thing. That's wait, wait, no, 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 wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So yeah. I, you can, you can, I, I like that. Always err on the side of freedom. That's that's great. It just, this is not the position that you put forward in your video. No, like if 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 this position you put forward now with us was your video, we wouldn't have never even. Covered well, I'm just because I just agree explaining with it a little deeper. I mean, I don't know. It's it's like <laughs> you. Well, but this is where I mean, the like, where there's there's the problem of like the superficiality of like hearing one statement that a person makes, and then like oh I understand. Sure, yeah. Response. Well, I mean, well, it tough. wasn't you one statement. Start to describe a, a lot of video. like tribal attributes to people, like oh well, they're part of this tribe, so they probably believe this and this and this and this, and then you have like this whole litany of no. And thanks of, for coming. Of attributes that you've decided the person you mm -hmm. know exemplifies or something, Th even and, though it's not necessarily the case. TJ, and thanks I for coming he, on I think to you're try. Doing a Sean, shut the fuck. Fuck up. I think he's doing a mop and bucket, like honestly, if I'm being honest. The mop, mop is and out bucket. and he's he's trying to make sure you don't attack his bucket. He's okay. yeah, the, the mop, mop and bucket, bucket man. The, the, the mop, mop and bailey, bucket. I like that. The mop and bucket. See, there you go. All I like right. it too. No, but I think let's this wrap is, this up, kind of okay? I'm getting tired of this. Oh, no, no, no. I, well, I just, are we gonna have like I'm a real not. conversation here? Are we all gonna talk Where the fuck have you been? Yeah, I don't know what Adam, I don't know what you're upset about. Honestly, but well, I was well, gonna say, I'm, I'm trying to Mahler... drill on an actual argument here. So. Okay, I'm, I've well, had st I've stop, been stop, courses. stop, stop. We're drilling in on we're drilling on something very important. Right? Yes, okay. which is that this is what Mahler brought up something about hyperbole versus like misinformation or disinformation, right. and it feels like, and this happens with a lot of content creators on YouTube, is that in order to create like an artistic piece or order to sort of create something engaging. The message becomes so hyperbolic that it's basically not even it doesn't even match whatever the original intention was. And when I when I listen and I look because I have like the transcript of, of the video open, when I look at the transcript of that and I look at what you're saying now, you're so hyperbolic in your video that I I don't even see like there seems so worlds difference of opinion that you're giving. All right, well yes. maybe you can give me an example. Well, okay, so you're so first of all, you lead the whole thing about saying that, you know, Republicans don't care or people on the right don't care about freedom of speech. They just want to say the N word. And you kind of go into this. I was naive to believe in free speech. Uh, but now you're going to be where is it? You're saying you're going to be, you know, ending up on the train to Auschwitz, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Because of <laughs> So, okay, but do but you I see? Where, I, don't really, I don't really see the where's the discrepancy. So, if, if you're laying out an argument that that says you know right wingers don't believe in free speech, they just want to be racist, and mm -hmm. I was naive to believe in the importance of free speech, and I, you said the idea I was naive to believe that you know in a debate of ideas the truth would prevail, mm -hmm. and then you say you know you're going to end up on this train to Auschwitz essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean. You, you, these are these are very these are much stronger claims for we need to restrict speech other than this. Well, we need to well, I never, err on I, the side of caution well, and gray okay, areas. Okay, so but when I said that a lot of people on the right just want to use the N word and this and that, um, mm -hmm. I wasn't using that as an example of the kind of speech that should be censored. I was using that as an example of the kind of free speech they actually prize, the kind of free speech that they actually want or care about, mm -hmm. um, and it's. I actually would not censor that because to me, that's an opinion and, you know, I, I don't want to censor opinion. Um, so, you know, I, I think they should still have the right to talk whatever hateful shit they want to. But I, I was just pointing out that that seems to be the only instance in which they actually care about free speech. Yeah, but if, if, but you're laying on an argument that you think, and you're like, Oh, I want to, I want to be Tim Poolish, but I think we're leading to the path of civil war and to Auschwitz. And well, if you're le hmm? I do believe that. Right. So, but, but, but you're, you're creating an art, you're crafting an argument where you're saying free speech is leading us down the path of the civil war in Auschwitz so that um, we need I to curtail this. Well, I, I don't know if it came across like that, then I guess mm -hmm. that maybe I should have worded it better because I don't think that's what I intended to say. Okay. 
I think what well, I was just saying is mm-hmm. I think I was just like maybe just generally pissed at right wing ideology and was just talking about the ultimate expression of it and what it seems like people on the right actually want. I don't think that freedom of speech is what leads you there. I think that, you know, belief in right wing ideology is what leads you there. Okay. Um, um, so I guess I maybe conflated a couple of different issues there. Um, and maybe maybe I, maybe I should have worded it better. But I don't, I don't think I was trying to make the case that freedom of speech directly causally leads to that outcome. Well, okay. Well, I guess I'll ask you what were you trying – I mean the video is labeled free speech and death camps. So I, right. well, like what is the point I guess of the video then? It's not like free speech leads to death camps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. That's how it comes across. <laughs> right. Well, I mean uh, yeah, maybe, like I said, maybe it was clumsily done. I mean like I've been doing this thing in July uh, where I've been trying to do a video every day mm-hmm. and like sometimes, you know, they, they might, there might be a little rush job here and there. Right, so maybe, right. Maybe like some ideas were casually thrown together that were maybe – uh, maybe a causal link was implied more strongly than than I intended it to mm-hmm. be uh, because of the uh, nature of that uh, challenge mm-hmm. that I gave to myself. Um, so I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch and, and see like what I was saying there. Uh, so like, what was the what was your point in the video then? Um, I mean, my point was just I was just trying to wake people up to the fact that they have an enemy that wants to do them harm. I mean, I oh, think Oh man, how can that but, possibly not backfire at all though? And what a, <laughs> that's got to be the justification for so many people you would say need to be curtailed. Mhm. I don't know. I just I well, hate but wait, it. You, you can you can wake people up to a perceived but I mean, enemy. Like, I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, like speech. should I tell I mean, I don't want to tell them that like, hey, these right-wingers are all a bunch of but uh, you know, uh, cuddly, fluffy teddy, teddy bears who don't mm-hmm. wish you ill will because I don't believe that. Right. Like, I live in the South. I live in one of those conservative areas in the country. I hear what these people fucking say. I hear them fucking talk about shooting faggots and we got to fucking get the, you know, <laughs> N-words back under slavery and all this shit. I've heard these motherfuckers say this shit. So, mm-hmm. like, don't tell me what's what, motherfucker. I know how these motherfuckers think. But that's not all conservatives, so you yeah. What are you, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. That didn't refute shit. <laughs> like, wait. That didn't refute shit. I no, literally have been around course. these people my entire fucking life, dude. dude. dude like, this, what wait, dude, wait, 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 wait. Doesn't count for Do you think my book, argument bro? is there's nobody who's just an asshole or evil in the world? Do, do you really think no, I was I'm, arguing there's no racist? I'm racists? talking about like the majority of the fucking right wingers that live down here, at least down south. Mm-hmm. At least this particular variant. Like, if you fucking, if I was to go into a room full of like. A bunch of Republicans around here, and I was just saying, like, man, things were better back in slavery days. You would not hear a peep against what I fucking said. I'm telling you that, fucking straight up. Yeah, and there's that exists on every literal argument. It doesn't even. I'm not even talking about left and right. They're just everywhere, all over the spectrum. You got the crazies. We sure. all know this. Well, well no, I'm, but, I'm, but, telling you the, I'm telling you the. I mean, it's not the crazy. See, you keep trying to reduce it down to this crazy fringe. It's not. It's the mainstream. It's what they all really fucking believe behind the mask. It's the fucking Bailey or the Mott or whatever the fuck is what. See, he's <laughs> he's using this all Republicans, all conservatives are racist argument. It's that that's the stereotype. Which By the way, mask fucking... on, mask off is the correct thing, not Martin Bailey yeah. for this situation. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think, do I think every single Republican is racist? No, but do I think a lot of them are? Yes. Well, you're a, you're acting you're acting in the world. Of them are, of you're course. acting mm-hmm. in the world as if they all are, and that's the stereotype. That's because that you're you're spreading. wait. But if you if there is a fucking also, party, that, that, if there's a party that gives shelter and fucking well, the hyperbole is gone. That's racism. Then yeah, yeah you but, have to treat them all well, the same. But, he, but here's, here's the, the issue. Wait, wait, wait. It's like he, the it's like the scene in the Matrix where you know you have uh, the thing about like, hey, these are the people we're trying to free, but until they are, they're your fucking enemy. Well, yeah. So are you being hyperbolic or not then? I mean, I think that there's an element of hyperbole, but what? I also think oh, there's shit. internal. <laughs> no. What does no, 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 no. it you... do with that? Like, I can't, how do I argue with a position that's you... simultaneously not and hyperbolic? I mean, well, can't something be slightly hyperbolic? Slightly hyperbolic, I guess. Well, so. Would it help you, Mahler, if you got like a specific percentage? I mean, like, I, I, wait, no, wait, wait, how many wait, 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 wait a minute. Are you saying there's not a gradient of exaggeration? Of course there is, but what am okay, I supposed well, to then do with this? Fucking like, problem. The fact that you said Republicans are like they're all going to want to do X, that I'm like that's not true. And you're like, uh, plenty of them around me do. It's like, that well, yeah. Be and, hyperbolic well, is then. that wait? How is that? How is plenty of them around me do not a fucking argument to you? Because, because it's you're anecdotal. About the whole world. 
Well, okay. Let me well, let about, me address well, why, this. This is why this isn't an argument. Okay, this is this was Tim Pool's argument for Trump was going to win a landslide in the election. It's because he drove around and he saw lots of Trump signs where he lived. Okay, but right. the five like, people yeah. he talked to, was, yeah, you right, know, exactly. Pennsylvania said that they're all shifting Republican. But also, like, I mean, how are you going to say that you're? It's not even. It's not even a personal experience. Like you're you're depicting a caricature. The idea that all these people are like, whoa, we got to bring back slavery. Like, no, come on. I'm okay, so like, proud of you, Sean. You didn't change the topic. That's very good. I like that. Dude, I mean, like, come on. Like, quit quit bullshitting. Who bro. wants to own a slave? Lots of people down south, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I've yeah. talked to a if, man. If you, had a, if you had to ask somebody on a 100-degree day, what would make your day better? Air conditioner, <laughs> which wasn't around in slavery times, or owning a slave? Like, you really with think a that fan. they a slave? It can follow you with a fan. <laughs> I mean, it depends on the... I mean, like, obviously, uh, now... They would choose the air conditioner because slavery, slavery is not socially acceptable. But like, if it was, I don't know. But you you just said that you heard all these people talking. Yeah, about evidently it is socially better. acceptable. Like, so it is socially south, acceptable. Yeah. I mean, it's. I didn't say it was socially acceptable. Obviously, we don't have slavery down here anymore. I'm just saying that there's a lot of people who feel that uh, you know. Wait. So it was I'm a actually, mis- it was a mistake. I mean, like you see, like this. You've heard like the South will rise. Like, what do you think that means? The South think- will rise again. What do you think? The, all the Confederate flags flying around and all the defense of the statues and all this shit. What do you think that's about? You it's, think it's just like, oh man, that's just our heritage. We just really I, like that statue because it's heritage. Okay, so out of curiosity, right? You think they would be a, just as defensive this, if it was a statue of Karl Marx? Like, well, that's history. Don't tear the Karl Marx statue down. That's history, y'all. Well, like, it's no. not our history. You know, you know, we talked about how you said it, it would be fine to have the opinion that, for example, COVID numbers are exaggerated. It would be a fine if you think that as an opinion. If I was to have stated it as fact, and I said my cite, my citation is that I have a family member in the hospitals that is uh, in on it, and is obviously is, is anecdote like only goes so far. That's true. Well, I was just going to say, like, would would you want me to be silenced if I actually start arguing? I have a I have a COVID family member who's in on it and knows about it, but they're trying to stop it from the inside, sort of thing. I mean, I think I'd want to <laughs> I'd want to investigate. But if I said like, there's no way to investigate because I don't want to get them in trouble. Um, I don't know. Then I guess, I guess I mean, it, whatever, it's a, zero, it's a zero sum thing at that point, like whatever. Well, the point I'm trying to get out, of course, is that there's a lot of ways we can argue uh, really broad and, and spicy positions right back down to something that's a bit more like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking hyperbolically about my experiences in my life, okay? And it's like, mm-hmm. right. But you can blow that right back up to something that's much more, um, let's say. I mean, that didn't sound like hyperbole. So you said you have direct knowledge of uh, the COVID being a fraud well, because hyperbole is... family members said this or that or the other thing or directly is involved in a conspiracy. That's not, that's not hyperbole. Is one of, hyperbole is one of several ways you can reduce it down. I wasn't using it in that example. I was just saying. Oh, okay, gotcha. Because you said like opinions should be okay, but stating things as fact shouldn't. But then if I said I'm stating it as a fact because of something that you can't disprove, what then? Well, then, you, I mean, like I said, you got to err on the side of freedom. Couldn't I justify everything that way, though? I, I'd be able to say anything at that point, right? Yeah, I mean, if you phrase, I mean, like, if you're clever enough to phrase it a certain way, you could pretty much still get away with everything. Yes. No, no, no. But in terms of your, the, the, what you want to be laid out, you could still get away with everything. In terms of what you want to be laid out? In terms of what you wanted to lay out, in terms of, like, the Ministry of Truth, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, you still, I mean, you can still get away with a lot of stuff. You couldn't get away with everything. You couldn't get away with, uh, you know, unambiguous direct statements that such and such is factual when it's not. But yeah, I mean, if you wanted to be like, oh, I was just, you know, joking around or this or that, or you find some kind of cover for it. Yeah, there's always loopholes. Well, could you sure. get away with your statement about every all these Republicans want to bring back slavery? Yeah. I'm telling an anecdotal fucking. I'm giving an anecdotal example. Yeah, but you're extrapolating it out to a broader group. Yeah, totally. Sure. So wait, would that that would I mean, like, work wait, with wait, the wait. like that's, races I mean, like, that's like, or wait, that's like, okay, wait. LGBT community? So wait, if I like, if I had fucking kind of... if I if I'd scientifically documented it, like if I went around and like recorded, like how many people do I have to hear it from before, like it's a sample size? Like, well, that's what, exactly it. If you take like a poll and you got a poll of Republicans you saying can't do, that they want to bring back slavery, poll, though, like it have to be it have to be something that was like more re- revelatory. Because of course, mm-hmm. anyone's asked like, "Are you racist?" Neuralink. Like, no, of course not. If, if it's assuming you could hypothetically, okay. okay, okay, then yes, you could say, okay, you conducted a poll 
you know. But I'm asking, like, what kind of sample, what kind of random sampling size would demonstrate poll that there is a predilection towards racism in at least Southern Republicans? No, but you understand that your whatever your personal experience is, mm -hmm. that's not indicative of the whole, really. Why not? Why not? Because that's not that's not how polling works. That's not how statistics or populations function. Oh, wait, but like, what's well, big is the team pool wait. driving around and seeing Trump signs, so Trump's going to win argument. But well, he walked, he, he drove around and saw Trump signs, and that was indicative of the fact that Trump has a wide board base of support, which he did. Now, ba now saying that because of that he was going to win was a bridge too far. But saying I see a lot of Trump signs, therefore Trump has a lot of support, that's not a fucking ridiculous statement at all. It's just no. truth. Okay. So you're saying you're going around and you're hearing all these Republicans saying that they. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to bring back the slavery. Republicans. I know that they're. I know that they're or right wing people. I, know, I, know people I know they're people who live in one of the yeah. reddest districts in America. Yes. And I know that this area is predominantly Republican, but mm -hmm. I guess I don't know that every example I hear of a racist is a Republican. I'll grant you that every know, racist you hear is Republican for the sake of the conversation. Okay. Well, I'm I'm saying I don't know that. I just what are they What are they that. saying though? Like did they come up to you, and they say, "Oh, hey, TJ." Well, they don't come I up to me. Of course, back. they're not coming up to me and saying shit. And you're, when you're at the Klan meeting and they're talking about bringing back slavery, <laughs> yeah, like, like how many you know, people are there? Yeah, lots of them, lots of them, tons. That's how I know. Right. Of no, but like, how how did these conversations? This just seems this just seems like such disingenuous bullshit right now. Well, like you're the this, because you're if the I was one. because if I was giving wait no if I was giving an anecdote to, that's, yes. that you guys about something you guys agreed with like this like oh man I was hanging around all these trannies and they were talking about how like they fucking we would totally not. deceive that's, the scientific no. institutions and so you'd be like oh yeah brother yeah dude yeah, anecdotal evidence is like a meme thing people bring up all the time like don't give me an anecdote like we we've all been there we try to avoid using sure, anecdotes. And I, I mean like I prefaced it as just saying it's anecdotal so yeah take it with a grain of salt if you okay. want. But do I'm just all, explain do, to you what I have seen. I'm curious. Yeah, There's a bunch of Republicans do. in California. Do they all want to bring back slavery? Does it does it differ? I don't from know. State I don't have enough state? experience with Republican fucking uh, in California, so I don't know. Right, but you're willing to paint all those Republicans in California as wanting to bring back slavery. I don't, paint, I don't fucking think I painted them with shit. Well, you kind of are. I mean, that's what you're saying. How? Well, you're saying most of them want to do this thing, therefore I can make extrapolate that it's I can make a judgment against most of them. I don't think yeah. I don't feel like I said anything like that, so I think that's a straw man. Well, you, you in your video you said that the only reason Republicans or conservatives care about freedom of speech is because they want to say the N word. How is that not all of them? That's hyperbole. Oh, that's the I mean, hyperbole I mean, like, part. Wait, see, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Do, do you guys not have any broad uh, brushes in your in your paint in yeah, your well, little paint box? Because I feel listen, like you probably do. Listen, this is the origin, though, of things like racism and bigotry, and all kinds of nasty things that we try to avoid. We try to, like, we don't want to say that all you know gay people are this particular I don't way ever because it's the word not, all. Okay, so. Well, you, you kind of did. I mean, your video was basically saying all the only reason Republicans care about freedom of speech is because they want to use the N word, which implies that they're racist. It does. Sure. I mean, how is that? So uh, is it is it? I would assume that there's probably I mean, like there's always exceptions to every fucking sort of generality. Mm -hmm. I don't think that every Republican <laughs> is that way. So I even, think a lot of them even, are. hold on. Even now. You're yeah. characterizing the non-racist Republican as an exception. That's yeah. so bad. Well, it's fucking that true. I mean, so I'm sorry. Do you bad. want me to fucking sit here and lie to you? Oh, I, I missed it. What happened? I would also say that there's why wouldn't it activate an audience well enough to say there are people who think this way rather than paying the whole or the, the team that way? Why wouldn't you be able to worry your people enough to be right. like, we should act to prevent the bad ones from winning? ones rather than just being like i'll let them think it's all of them fuck it hyperbole <laughs> um i don't know what, what is what's the question basically the one of the bigger arguments is like i can go broader i can brush that way because it'll it's it's almost true in lots of different uh, aspects plus hyperbole blah 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 when i'm saying like the overall goal to activate your audience you could do that anyway with the examples of the awful individuals you wouldn't need to paint the whole i don't think there's game. any reason to be disingenuous with the audience and to that's what we're arguing. Well, you this, are doing. this is the point. No, though, I, I, I mean. don't, see, this thing is like I feel like there is a mental block happening 
where you guys just refuse to accept that like this shit is way worse on one side than it is the other. I don't know if it's like a both sides ism thing. Oh, wait, no, it's, 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 it's not this? that. I'm just curious. What's the percentage since you're like not saying all, but you're saying in general. Yeah. Of tell like us. white people I mean, in the South just, that you've come across that are like possibly Republican. Because I don't, I mean, obviously I don't fucking have a, I'm well, not well, a scientist. Probably, I haven't done a predominantly. What would be your percentage for the bring back slavery crowd? Yeah. Give us an idea. Full talk. All right. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it, so preface. No this hyperbole. By, well, okay. I, no hyperbole. Prefacing this by saying that like, this is my rough guess your gut intuition check yes my intuition so take it as just that mm -hmm. uh in the particular area that i'm in the candid conversations that i've been subjected to i mean it's kind of hard to say because you know i don't know what the areas that i go might be predominantly reflective of different demographics than like the overall demographics of the, the area. But I don't know. I'd say at least 10, 15%. Oh my God. That's so Dude. horrible. <laughs> okay. Okay. At least, you know, I mean, I've, you want, I mean, like, I'm sorry that the actual, the reality that I've experienced is like so troublesome, but <laughs> right. it is, it's, I don't know. It's just funny, honestly. But you're like, saying 85% of, you're saying you're just, 85%. Like, you're just in fucking denial, bro. Like, well, you're, you're saying, in you're, li you're in denial. Look, if, you're literally listen, saying 85% of the TJ, Republicans TJ, in the South if, are not racist. If, if you said, if you said like, listen, mm -hmm. like. 10 15 no, percent no, based on my like experience what comfortable with slavery not what aren't racist if you want to ask me how many are racist i'd say like 90. okay <laughs> oh yeah fuck. All right. if you get if you gave me like that solid 10 no, you, to 15 percent for your question you asked me you asked me what percentage would support slavery coming back so you're talking about like extreme racism but there's different <laughs> levels of racism obviously yeah right? that that's why i'm laughing if you give me the 10 to 15 for like the the definite like hardcore racist i'd be right. like all right you know what that's that's your experience but like, come on! Like, wh why are we even talking about slavery right now? Like, it's it's so absurd. Like, why? It's, I don't it's know. over. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it is over. That's true. Very good, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> true fact. I mean, he's he's when he's right, he's right. Slavery is over. <laughs> well, no, it's not. Haven't you seen what's going on in these prisons? The Thirteenth Amendment didn't abolish slavery; it legalized it. That's right. <laughs> so, you guys want to wrap up? I mean, we've been going almost ten hours here. So, TJ, you've been super generous with your time. Will you come back and talk to us again, or is it like over? Are we no longer friends. Uh, it's what we were friends. never friends. I mean, this is our first meeting. Yeah, I never. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember our, our well, I guess. I guess but, the hey, you know, the question is: Are I we came, mortal I, you know, I enemies? Pop, I popped I guess. in at the. Uh, I popped in at the very end of your your stream and shit. So yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know. I mean, it seems like fair that I would come back if you guys want. Well, I to. just. I you you seem sure, like a, you seem like a good sport about this stuff, and I mean, we're just. I mean, part of. I think the intrigue of our show is we're just we're trying. So many of these conversations are really just people. Well, making of, shit up one of the about reasons, the other side so I'll say that one of the reasons that i came on is because when i was watching you guys in the background as i was like kind of working on some other shit and you were uh, talking about the video i made to you more recently i was like well you know these, these i probably should have been a little bit more charitable to these guys so i felt a little bad so yeah. uh you know i decided well, to pop you. in here and shit and, uh, mm -hmm. well your, your performance in the follow-up video i think was just like I th and I think I said it before you even came on. It was like worlds apart, like high energy, very funny. I thought the Vosh bit was very funny. You know, I, yeah. is it, do, I mean, you, uh, I, we argued a bit. Did you hear us when we were talking about the Vosh thing? Uh, yes. Okay. I did. So you're asking, I think yeah. you were, you were speculating about, uh, yes. <laughs> Are you about whether I was like, yeah, genuinely like, Capitulating, capitulating to Vaughn. Yes, exactly. Come on, you can tell us. We will. It's just between us. We won't let Vosh know. No one. No one else needs to know. Um. No, I mean, I I have respect for Vosh, and uh, but you know, I'm I'm not gonna fucking hold back joking about it. And I I especially like I don't know. I resent being compared to other people in general. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. Right. It it annoys me. So I I don't know. I was I was not super keen on the comparison 
Uh, not because I feel like being compared to Vosh is necessarily a negative or unflattering thing, but just because right. I don't like to be compared to others in, in general. Well, it's I like can a relate. Pet peeve. Yeah. So, sure. You're an artist. You're an independent person. You don't want to be. I guess if yeah. you want to call me that. And you know, I, Listen, I don't know. I, I, I think. Your, like, how can we not call you so, an artist? You don't. TJ, I got to know. Do you think of yourself as an artist? Um, I don't know if I'm. Uh, my pretension has quite reached that level yet. But, you know, we'll <laughs> oh, see. Good hey, answer. Hey, TJ, I was there for the release of Brick and Brick 2. Okay. Yeah, you know, amen. You are. Uh, so thank you guys for the spirited discussion and shit. And, you know, I wish we could have fucking come to more of a, uh, I don't know, a, a consensus or, or something. But I don't know. At least it was more fruitful than most discussions that get bogged sure, down yeah. in, in fucking semantics for 20 mm -hmm. hours. So, yeah. Um, somebody wants me to ask you the three questions. So I guess I'm going to go for it. Uh, how, <laughs> many, how, how many walkers have you killed? Uh, okay. That's not the three questions. How many people you. have you killed? Stop. Uh, 33. Let me get my Rick voice. We can, we can, we can ask the three questions. Uh, Why? The, the, well, the three I... questions, uh, TJ, are, do you think you could defeat a horse-sized duck in a fight? A horse-sized duck? Yeah. Um. No. Come on, you're 6'6", okay. six, six, TJ. No. I know, but, you know, dude, you fucking, a duck, ducks breed through rape, okay? <laughs> Like ducks this was are the used argument the struggle, I made. Okay. <laughs> right? Ducks are used to the fucking struggle. Right. They know how to fucking scrap. So yeah. I don't think so. You got there a horse go. size, you got a fully erect horse sized duck coming at you. You run. Yeah. <laughs> like that's not a that's not a battle you think like this foe is beyond any of you. You know, you gotta go. Okay. Okay. So no, so that's there's very few people that are on the yes team. Yeah. So that's and they're all they're it's that's a delusional just proves team. That I'm honest, you know. That's, that's no, they're it. just they're just based on awesome, but that's fine. It's okay. Sure. sure. Uh, the second question is: Are owls birds? Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> answer. Good answer. I, like I don't that. know. They just are. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the fuck even kind of question is that? So don't worry about it. it. The, okay. the, the third the third final question, which you do not have to answer, uh, is a porn question. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you might be fine with it. Is uh when you if if you watch porn. Do you if. <laughs> give me a break <laughs> when you watch porn? Do you view yourself as like a participant in it? Like the actor is you or do you view it like you're kind of watching two people like do this thing in front of you? I always uh, try to put myself into it in my mind, I guess. Okay. All right. That's how most people yes. generally seem to answer the question. Now you guys have to tell him what job he's going to do after these three questions when he grows up. <laughs> No, that's he's gonna be a YouTube uh, commentator. What do you mean? Oh, like, look, like, the horoscope like thing works. A mopper in a court in a, in a, in a porn but, store, right? Yeah. In that regard, though, have you considered getting more involved in like panels and political discussions? I thought you were stuff? gonna say porn. <laughs> well, why? Too, why sure. have you considered Mahler. getting more involved in porn? Oh yeah, you know, I'm just why are you working taking on a uh, pineapple gate right now. You know, working my way <laughs> up the fruit spectrum, trying to get some pineapples. Uh, look at that. No, I don't really do this panel shit too much, but uh, whatever. I mean, it didn't, whatever. It was fine. Um, <sighs> panels are cancer. You don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't really. Yeah, I, I think I'd like to keep it, um, you know, minimal, especially these fucking ones where it's like a hostile fucking panel and everyone fucking disagrees. I need, I want to be on one of these panels talking mm -hmm. against one motherfucker that we all hate or, or something. Or, you know, they're like, ah, fuck you. You're wrong, bitch. But, you know, whatever. You want to be on the mob side. I yeah, I want to be on the fucking side of the mob next time. What's right. all this fucking shit where I get ganged up on? Right. Wait, yeah. Well, Sitch, I was trying to him, avoid that a bit. So we we don't we don't hate you, and I just no, want to say that right. I defended I, you, and like I I even called out Adam for his mop and bucket tactics. Yeah, that <laughs> fucking son of a bitch. Mop and bucket. Wait, I don't even Sitch. know what that means. Yes. But. Ask him. Ask him which the which trilogy is the best. No, that. come on, Mahler. Well, that's for that next question. time. We're gonna be here for like two no, hours. No, not to talk about it, just to get the answer. OG trilogy is the best. Oh, no, no. No. Okay, you of can't Of course, choose that's the that's, that's the one. easy oh, answer. The obvious one. It's oh, a okay. two well, unthinkable options. It's the prequels <laughs> or the sequels. Let me just say, like this fucking new found, like I respect the prequels ever since this, like. Just because a worse piece of shit comes along does not make the previous piece of shit forgivable. Yeah, thank you. That's, that oh, is, well, I guess that's that the, is the best that. Uh, Based anyway, yeah, take. I'll take the pre I'll take the prequels because at least they were coherent. 
Yay, Team TJ. There you go. Look, I'm listen, Mahler, you've built a bridge now. Look at this. Hell yeah. 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 Amazing. There you go. Next time, it can be me and TJ versus Sitch and Destiny, I guess. I'm not oh, on man. Destiny's position. Yeah, you are. You said the prequels were worse. He's changed. I've, no, I've, oh, I've changed. Oh, how dare you? Oh, my God. How you, dare you? I said the prequels are better bucket. because of the meme potential now. You mop yeah. a bucket. Actually, I never said the prequels were worse. I said they were both bad in different ways. Yeah, no, you, you did. did. You on, on the the as far as I'm concerned, the main thing that makes the prequels, <laughs> like the prequels are better because it has a coherent beginning, middle, and end that was all like at least somewhat pre-planned. <laughs> and a narrative structure. I'm not sure I would agree with that, but okay. I mean, like, Actually, it, I, but I, I mean, compared to that. the fucking sequels, at least, I mean, I like, guess that's true. That's it's true. like that's a good. schizophrenic trilogy that doesn't, yeah. like, it just seems like someone made it up as they went along because it pretty right. much was. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. sure. That's, like, I don't know. That's very true. Oofy to me. Every, every anyway. movie is a reaction to the previous movie. Yeah. yeah well, what not, everyone said about with, the previous like, movie. Like, dueling banjos with fucking billions of dollars. It does, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. I want you to know more. I sent you the picture. If you Google Ma and Bailey, okay, that shows oh, that we, I'm we right. know what what uh, you are per, perineum. Uh, no, we can talk about like. that if you want. Uh, You're wrong. PSA. So the the per, to answer you on the perineum Itch. thing, that was actually a super chat that somebody and our editor edited out the super chat, so you wouldn't have known the context because sounds like I'm just talking about perineums <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, uh, Wait, did you actually send me a DM? Because um, I didn't get it. Or was that just a bad Yeah, that yeah, was I another did, thing. I, no, I did send you that. Okay. Uh, okay. Even, I'm looking at it right here. In my I don't friend. have I, even I don't sent have you it. some other stuff as well. Like just like when I was watching you guys, I just I sent you the you asked like if I would send you the fascist yeah. tendencies that I saw yes. in myself and I I did. But Okay, so for but I already you must be flagged by Twitter because so. it's not showing up in my DMs at all. Um sometimes like shit can go in like other little stupid inboxes and shit, so okay. it's just Sitch doesn't like want to scroll down all the way to the bottom because it's he's like, being, oh, I don't feel like he's being a little Oh, here we fucking, go. I got to the bottom. Show he's being a little messages, fucking including bitch. those that may yeah. contain. You oh, can you're just right. Click the gear on the fucking There it is. You're Twitter All labels right. you as offensive content. Oh no! So there you go. Oh wow, there's a bunch of Could DMs here. I wish I probably had never seen before. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah I'll come back on if you guys want. But yeah, uh, sure. I'm gonna go for now. Take care, awesome. man. Thank Thanks you. for Enjoy your on. spaghetti that we never stuff, saw. I, I actually just, I actually uh, usually just have a f random word or phrase that I just like say compulsively for no reason. And spaghetti just happens to be it for the moment. Okay, that's good. So there was no spaghetti. There was sorry. There was, there that was, was hyperbolic. No spaghetti. There never was. I, sh I'm, I should be the, become the victim of my own ministry of truth. Mop yes. and bucket my once again. He used the meatball spaghetti defense. I think I the know, fifteen percent in favor of slavery kind of makes you a victim of your own ministry of truth. But I mean, we'll talk about that <laughs> next mean, time you come. Well, on. we can we can extrapolate <laughs> oh. that and, and next time you bring me on. Yeah. Okay. Take care, man. Uh, thanks yeah. for coming on.